Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Of course, this is TFT, Tinfoil Talk. And today we're going to be talking about Nikola Tesla. Very interesting figure. And, uh, uh, of course, as usual, we're going to go through. I'm going to give you a little introduction to who the person is and uh, uh, or the topic. In this case, it is a person. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to give a little bit later, after I let these guys give their opinions, I'm going to give you mine. And I, I have a feeling that uh, what I'm about to say about uh, Nikola Tesla today is not something you expected. Uh, and that's a good thing, right? Uh, but uh, nevertheless, the first thing we always want to do is tell you guys to check out our, uh, our links. We do appreciate all the interaction over on Facebook, on our fan speak group, and that's uh, growing and doing really well. We thank you guys for that. Uh, also, keep in mind, I do have links there if you want to be on one of these shows or you want to be on the Drone Dr- Dr- Recorder, of course. Just get in touch with me, and I'll take care of that. Uh, but uh, one of the best things you guys can do is to hit that share button and let out to your family and friends and extended community so they come over here and watch this live stream, right? Uh, but as usual, I want to come over and I want to say hello to my panel. Hello, panel. Hello. Hello. It's, a, it's me, panel. It is me, panel. Uh, how you doing, yes. Booster? Me? I'm doing great. I, I, I'm just great. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I went over and I saw a Booster on a different stream. And I uh, understand when, mm-hmm. he, when he's with his New Zealand buddies, he sounds very different. Do I? Um, do I sound different? You what did. You did. Yeah. Is it the way I talk or is it because of my uh, voice? He has a much better microphone than I do. I think it might be the better mic, and I also think it might just be you're with your buddies. You know. Or is it because I'm like, hey, bro, what's up, cuz? Hey. Oh, did you bring that feed? Yeah, bro. No, it was because of that. I'm uh, here. I'm going to pay I'm gonna pay a big compliment, Boost. Your voice sounds much, much more manly when you're with your – when you're on oh, that other you. stream you were. It was more You manly. don't sound quite as uh, – Effeminate. What do you mean effeminate? <laughs> the whinging was kind of effeminate. But, uh, uh, he was just trying to please you, Dundaro. Yeah. I now, we you know who's the bottom. We went I always think I saw men. We have no we, idea what you're talking about. Well, yeah. we went over and raided that stream, tried to give you a little bit of a hard time. But I do have to give you props and compliments, so I'm, uh, I'm clapping for you. Uh, because he de- did beat the new Resident Evil on hardcore mode. So, uh, yeah, rock Blind on, playthrough. Blind First playthrough. time going yeah. for that game. Yeah. Straight to hardcore, boys. Good job, dude. Just want to just wanna humble brag on that. Humble brag, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, are you prepared for the conversation about Nikola Tesla? Are you ready? I am. Yeah, I watched Prestige uh, recently, so I know pretty much everything <laughs> there is. Do a bum. Yeah. He knows all the secrets now. He knows yeah. all the secrets now. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Well, let me move over. Hello, Denali. How you doing, man? I, I'm doing good. Join myself in this Florida weather that's continuously raining on one side of my house and the other side, all sunshine. Wow. Yeah, it is. Uh, the South has weird weather like that. It is true. Uh, but uh, are you prepared for Nikola Tesla here? Uh, you got some uh, information to share with the folks? Oh, uh, yeah. A couple of informations. A couple of informations. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. And couple. of course, <laughs> the mighty man of electricity himself and the holder of oily things, which does help to conduct the electricity and make it flow in a more uh, fragrant way. Thundero. Hello, 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 hello. I am very excited about doing this one on Tesla. Tesla is a very awesome topic. Um, he is one of the greatest men to ever live, period. And it's a shame more people don't know so don't know about him. It is, and <clears throat> I'm going to do a, a deep dive on this fella today that uh, I have a feeling that the people who do enjoy looking into Tesla don't know. Because uh, uh, Tesla is certainly Uh-oh. a subject of interest to mine. Uh, because... His understandings and sciences that he was part of are actually a big part of my, I, I don't know, my cosmology, my own personal cosmology as far as the philosophy on how things work. Uh, Tesla is extremely important in those ways, but uh, I will save that. Well, he was, <clears throat> he was, I mean, a century and a half almost ahead of his time and what he formulated as far as how the universe was structured and functioned. So he's awesome. He was an awesome man, and it's a shame that the uh, powers that be conspired so heavily against him. Well, they simply just stole his stuff. That's really where they come yeah. down to. Uh, yeah. but, uh, we'll Destroyed his whole life. Uh, let's see here. The South has uh, too many sun showers. The, uh, 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 this is true. Uh, I have seen the weirdest weather ever in the South. 
uh, it is a bizarre thing. But uh, but then again, the weather is far stranger than uh, uh, than we think. And uh, it's interesting that uh, weather has been brought up two or three times already because, you know, Tesla and weather are directly connected. <gasps> what? Yeah. Uh, uh, so it should are be... You saying you had a whipper machine? Well, it's deeper than that. Uh, we'll get into that. Because I don't uh, remember that part in The Prestige. It might have been in one of the deleted scenes or something, but if he had a weather machine, I'm very interested in that plot. Yeah, but see, the problem is The Prestige, I don't even think Tesla has a line. He's hmm? just kind of in the background, isn't he? Well, no, no, he's pretty much like the main focus of The Prestige. You know that part where <laughs> Nikolai Tesla makes like a cloning machine? And then, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, no. That's, no, that's not true at all. Uh, and a lover mm. of pigeons. Yes, uh, I would say that uh, uh, Black Pigeon uh, uh, might uh, find him very interesting. Do you guys ever watch uh, Black Pigeon Speaks? Uh, yeah, I have uh, yeah. for a long time, actually. I think he's very insightful, um, yeah. pr- very very good speaker. He's, he's yes. very, uh, very intelligent, which I'm apparently not at the moment. <laughs> well, he lives in uh, mm. Tokyo, actually. Uh, he's Canadian, but uh, he does live in Tokyo. So it's a. Uh, uh, I do enjoy his uh, his dissertations. Of course, he's mainly uh, speaking on pol- almost completely speaking on political things. Occasionally, he'll drop up, uh, drop down some kind of historical aspect, which I think is just uh, fun for him. But mainly, he's a uh, political commentator. Uh, but um, he is interesting, um, and he calls it's interesting because he calls himself uh, self, uh, Navy Hato. And uh, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, so he's a, a, a Marine or a Navy guy. And it makes me laugh because Navy, of course, is a color. But Hato is uh, actually how you say pigeon in Japanese. So, so he's a blue pigeon. It's the, blue, it's the dark, dark, it's the dark, dark blue pigeon, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tesla was a nut job. Thomas Edison for the win. Wow. You're going to lose this conversation, Mr. Scriver. <laughs> 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 Edison was a psychopath. Oh, Edison was a salesman. Actually, he was really good Edison at literally tortured animals live with electricity just to try and dis- just to try and smear Nikola Tesla. That's he a did. psychotic person. He did. He did. Uh, but um, you know, uh, a lot of people I think misunderstand Edison. Um, uh, did he invent a lot of things? Well, he patented a lot of things. Uh, but uh, actually, what Edison was really good at was hiring the right people. And uh, he, his shop there in New York, uh, he brought in so many of the world's geniuses got both brought in. And he did some work himself, too. But uh, uh, Edison was really more of a, a really, really smart manager and a, a really clever salesman is really what he was. Uh, as far as the hardcore science, Edison doesn't really fall into that category. And unfortunately, no. most people don't know that. And, it's, it, it, and there's a few of those things that are going to come up today, uh, I think, because... You know, one of the problems we have is when you go to school, they give you a textbook and you assume that that textbook and the teacher that is teaching out the textbook, because they don't know any better. I mean, I've I've known a lot of actual teachers, right, especially the uh, the primary, secondary uh, uh, educators. And they don't all they do is just stay ahead of the kids in the book. That's all they do, right? They're not particularly the geniuses on the subject they teach, right? Uh, Some are, but in general, they're not. And um these textbooks they give you, they, do you think they're just filled with the actual knowledge of today? Or do you think they're actually filled with the knowledge that they want you to know? The, un- the unfortunate problem is anywhere you go in the world, textbooks are full of propaganda, right? And yes. Edison and Gandhi and et cetera, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this is all part of the propaganda. Uh, because Edison and Einstein and things like that, these are the poster boys for science. These are the people that are being shown to you as this is science. But if you actually look into what is science, you'll find that these guys are actually nowhere near as uh, as important as you think. Let, let's take Einstein for a real quick moment. Uh, this is a little bit off topic, but it's actually on topic. Uh, what is his famous thing? What is that? Oh, yeah, the E equals MC squared. Is that it? That's it, right? Energy. Yeah equals mass yes. squared, right? Is that, is that, that, is that, am I right on that? I just want to make sure. Yeah, of course I'm right on that. Well, right. Square. Right. Yeah. Now, here the, here's the thing. If we are saying this is true, uh, then mm-hmm. if we go to space, because he's all about spatial math, right, and spatial science, right, and then we say energy is equal to mass squared, then how in the world, in a vacuum, which is what is told to you to be space, uh, would there be any mass at all to square? 
<gasps> because it's the energy. It's yeah, related no, to the speed. Not. If you dig travel. down into it, you'll see it's the most inane thing ever, dude. E, e equals MC squared is stupid. It really is, dude. If you go and actually research and just think about it for a moment and go into the real science, yeah. you'll see that it's just nonsense billboard commercialism, dude. You cannot have squared mass of any kind of mass in uh, and therefore being energized inside an actual vacuum. So either no, he is correct no. and there is no vacuum or well, there's something else going square, on. It's C square. You're not he's not timing the mask. It's mass time acceleration. Yeah, equals I, I, energy. yeah, I understand. Then when then we get into acceleration inside a vacuum. Right. I, I know mm -hmm. you want to argue the point for me because you're a good uh, a good grade school boy. Uh, but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, dude, it's nonsense. And if you go take some time and actually research it, actually research it, you'll find that it doesn't make any sense at all. But then again, Einstein is the man, and we have to follow mm -hmm. the man because he is the I man. agree with Chester. I don't even understand how letters can even multiply with this. It has nothing to do with math at all. That's Math is numbers, stupid. Yeah. And Nick, it, Nick says Chester is selling plasma. Dude, I'm going to win the day with plasma. You watch. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so uh, let me give myself a, a, give us a quick little introduction. And it will be very quick, actually. Uh, let me come over here and uh, I will share with the guys here. One second. All righty. All right. Let me just come over here and do our quick little introduction like we do. Nikola Tesla. And actually, Denali and I were talking about this earlier. It really feels like it should be should be Nikolai Tesla, huh? Yeah. It feels that way. It must be a Mandela effect because it's not. It's Nikola Tesla. Uh, but uh, Nikola Tesla, of course, uh, he was born somewhere in Europe. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, let me come over and uh, uh, find out exactly where in Europe he was born. All righty. So uh, let's see. Nikola Tesla. Here we go. Croatia. He's a Serbian, I think. A, Ser a Serbo-Croatian. Mm -hmm. There you go. And yeah. uh, he was born in 1856. Ooh, that was a long time ago. Uh, well, and it's interesting, too, because uh, 1856, uh, a lot of us don't have much of a feeling or understanding uh, of a lot of science going on at that time. But actually, that was a, kind of a burgeoning time in science uh, going all the way up into uh, uh, the very beginning of the 20th century. Um, but right. uh, refrigeration was invented around that time. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we have an uh, electrical engineering, a mechanical engineer, a futurist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, he did uh, work for Edison's Machine Works. He did that, and uh, he actually offered a couple of things that Einstein, uh, that Edison stole. Oh goodness gracious! Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Simple. Nikol Nikola Tesla, foreigner, immigrant, came to America, uh, did some science stuff, and that's about all I want to give personally. Uh, until I come to my time. So who wants to go first? Who wants to talk about their interaction and in ideas uh, regarding Nikola Tesla? Well, mine is pretty basic for the most part. I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to explain to people, because a lot of people don't know about Tesla, mm -hmm. how important he, he really is. Um, there, when it comes to science, there's a few superstars that get mentioned a lot, like Da Vinci, uh, in America, Benjamin Franklin, which worldwide too. Um, and obviously Edison's one of them with the light bulb and the other yep. things that he helped invent. Um, but Tesla should be on that list easily. He should probably be near the top of that list with the la people of the last hundred years. This, the reason I say this is because this man invented the probably, as far as electronics go, the greatest invention of all time. And that is the AC induction motor. That's this right. is a motor that we still use today almost exactly as he designed it. Now we've changed some of the materials out for better materials and some high-end ones, but largely most of the things that have an electric motor in it use a variation of this design. That alone changed the world in a way even he couldn't have understood because every probably everybody who's listening to this or most of the people who do use these motors in one form or another in every appliance they have, in every computer they have, um, because the fans that are in those use these motors. They're the same exact motor or really similar. There's a couple that use different ones now, but most of them use an AC induction motor. And that is how important it was. So think about 
your refrigerator, just your simple refrigerator. Everybody overlooks the refrigerator. If you don't have a refrigerator and nobody has a refrigerator, that changes the whole world. Oh, yeah. It would take, take us back 100 years. I mean, just boom, just not having the ability to refrigerate our food and freeze our food. Your refrigerator probably has two of these at least in it that operate pretty much all the time to help keep it cool, to help keep and move the cold air around. Um, that is how important this man is. That invention alone and the fact that it was about 100 years ahead of its time is beyond impressive. And that's just one. He has a list. I'm looking at the list right here. The total number that he can be granted is 278 patents in 26 countries. Um, he obtained around 300 worldwide, but that was 278 that have actually been found in, in archives. He, he had a, a record of 300, though. Um, and these are all different things, most of them relating to energy and his motors that he created because he created other versions of it as well uh dynamos things of this nature but this man also and here's where the tft part comes in invented the first energy weapon that we know of on a large scale it, he Ooh. called it a death beam tesla's death beam or death ray if you what we call it today he was so afraid of this weapon that he took the schematic for it broke it up into three parts and sent it to the three world powers of that day so that only one would have it at one time. This is a man who understood electricity better than anybody probably who's ever lived definitely until that point. He, in America, every single person whose lights are on right now, you can thank Nikola Tesla for that because we have in America, we use alternating current. The rest of the world, or most of the rest of the world, uses direct current, which is far less efficient, especially over long gaps, because America, you know, is huge, and we have big open areas where there's just nothing. But we can run lines and use alternating current much easier, thanks to Nikola Tesla. Um, I like, there's other things as well. When Nikola Tesla died, and he died basically broke, he was living in, an, I think, in a hotel in, uh, I want to say, in New York or Philadelphia, something like that. And was it Chicago? I can't remember. And anyway, the federal government sent agents into his hotel room mm -hmm. and gathered up all of his notes, or at least most of his notes. This is how ahead of his time this man was. They didn't want even his notes to get out into the public. Mm -hmm. And the reason they didn't want that is because this was 130 years ago. The man had already created a machine that could wirely, wirelessly transmit energy. Yeah. 130 years before we had any kind of Wi-Fi, before we had cell phones, before we had wireless uh, phones to talk with, he had invented the technology to do it. No one could implement it, though. He yeah. also had... Go ahead. Could I, could I expand upon that before you get too far away sure. from it? Uh, the agents that came and took his paperwork and all his uh, uh, all his notes and stuff like that. Uh, actually, one of the people on the team that was put in charge of that uh, of those papers and such was an immigrant himself, and uh, had come in. He was in charge of it. A lot of those papers disappeared mysteriously. Now, some people say the government just disappeared them into their own pockets, uh, but there's a lot of evidence that this guy, this immigrant I'm talking about, actually disappeared in himself. And he's actually from over there in that Croatia. Poland, Romeria, you know, that Baltic area himself. And the interesting thing about it, he has a nephew who's doing really well for himself. His name's Donald Trump. Ooh. Oh, really? Now that I did not know. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yep. And that's what I, I was going to say is that when you were talking about the death ray, x ray, um, he was working with a John Trump, who's the uncle mm -hmm. of Donald Trump. Uh, J. Trump. That's right. So. Yeah. Now it's an interesting yeah. little point. Yep. A little connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, continue. Here's even sorry, more. Sorry. Here is continue. here, in my opinion, all the other stuff like the the electric motor and the AC current and all this stuff, which is it was all way ahead of its time in in the way that he de designed it. it to the point that, like I said, we still use pretty much the exact same design today. That is nothing compared to what he almost did. He almost, quite literally, liberated the world when it came to electricity. He had within his 
notes within his plans he was going to build effectively a wireless energy receiver that would power an entire area wirelessly and effortlessly it would have cost nothing in fact there's a picture oh if he goes back down real quick mm -hmm. there's a picture oh hang on look at the wrong thing if you go back you can see a picture of what he was building it was called warden cliff tower i believe this one here and right. yes that tower was being funded by westinghouse jp morgan. and one of the reasons and, and jp morgan and one of the reasons westinghouse and them did not want to continue funding it is because they figured out that this was basically going to take away their ability to to charge people for electricity mm -hmm. It was going to be so simple and so so easy to use and use basically the massive amounts of electrical currents that are hitting our planet and in our planet at all times. It would have completely eradicated the oil industry, at least as far as for power. Um, it would have eradicated coal. It would have eradicated a lot of their business. And the only thing they would have been doing would be able to sell antennas, basically, for, for people to activate the action, you know, gain power from this. Now, it is said that Tesla, and I don't know how much truth there is to this, because this was claimed, I think, after he died, if I remember correctly, that the reason he actually abandoned this research is because he found out that it was too dangerous, that the electrical currents at that much uh, potency would cause all kinds of crazy stuff to happen in people's brains. Where I bring this back to is today, every single major country is working on a network known as 5G. There have been repeated studies that come out that say that 5G can literally drive you crazy. The electrical current or the current of the whatever it is, the energy current going into your brain has all kinds of effects. It can cause brain tumors. It can cause basically you to go crazy. And it's the exact, almost the exact same symptoms that Tesla was worried about with his towers a hundred years ago. So they knew my point is, they knew, the people that are behind all this, the people who went and raided him, probably found this information. They know that this is going to do this, and they're doing it anyway because they aren't the man that Nikola Tesla was. And they're, and they're connecting a lot of stuff like Harp and other things to him as well as being his tech. Uh, and, yep. of course, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that happened with his tower in particular, uh, and, and he couldn't, uh, you know, he couldn't go on and perfect it, uh, was because the money was the funding when it was pulled by JP Morgan uh, because he found out, Hey, this guy's trying to give away free energy. I'm trying to make money here. And he pulled the funding for uh, Tesla. Uh, that was a big reason why he didn't uh, go on and perfect it. Uh, but the interesting thing about that tower, I just kind of want to interject here is what he's doing with his tower is very interesting. What he's doing, what, what Nikolai Tesla had understood was there was an electrical connection between the earth itself and the atmosphere itself. And he was creating a Correct. connection between the two. And not only could he remotely, uh, with this tower, uh, uh, get energy, he's also the one who could go out and he would just plug a special made rod into the ground and get energy right off of it, which is the ridiculous the statement I just made, but it's true. Uh, but he also yep. found that he could actually control where the lightning was dropping in the atmosphere around him. Therefore, he could control lightning from the sky. Correct. And therefore, weather. And this is a power that obviously governments wouldn't want to get into the hands of citizens. <laughs> um, it would be catastrophic if something like that fell into the wrong hands. It just would. The, you, the things you could do with that are un astronomical. Why does this sound like the origin story for Weaver Wizard? Uh, <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> ah. You know, the funny thing, I can't wait till it's my turn because I'm going to blow your mind. Anyway, keep, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Um, that's basically what I wanted. I just wanted to do an overview of it, of some of the some of the the more uh, mainstream, I guess you would say, theories and, and conspiracies on Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, he was a man so far ahead of his time, and so far uh, and unwilling to yield what he believed in that they had to destroy him, and they did, and they tried to erase him from history. The problem is, is he made too much of a mark, even with all of their efforts, including men like Mr. Edison who tried to erase him from history repeatedly. Um, right. He is a man to be, in all honesty, he's one of the greatest men to ever live. If it, if it were not for him, um, we wouldn't have many of the things we have today. It's just that simple. He was that far advanced. And uh, what I'm so showing right here, displaying, uh, just to stick with uh, what you had been taught, what you're talking about here, uh, this diagram that you're looking at is something that he offered to the world free, actually. 
And uh, what yep. he said was that uh, uh, the children in school are being taught mathematics in a very uh, uh, convoluted and confusing manner. Uh, and there's a much easier way to teach math. And uh, this is what he just, this little thing he just threw together to try to help educators teach math better. Now, it looks confusing when you look at it, but if you go and you study this uh, mathematical system that he put forward for educational purposes, you'll find that it's actually a lot easier. It's a much more intuitive way to do math, right? Now, are we studying this kind of math these days? Nope, we're not. Nope. And it's unfortunate because it's actually better. Uh, and, of course, uh, this down here is a, a little uh, interesting point. Uh, this is uh, came up in the same search, but it's not actually the same thing. This is talking about his vortex math, and I'm going to get into that myself later. Uh, but, um, yeah, very interesting. He also, he was, he was one of these men who, while an inventor, he wanted his stuff to be given to people as cheaply as he possibly could. Yeah. That's what he wanted the information shared. He didn't believe in the idea that ideas should be somebody's property. Um, it, it's amazing that this man came up at the same time as these hardcore industrialist capitalists. Um, he showed most of them up as far as what he knew and what he was able to do. Mm -hmm. And for that sin of competing with them, but not competing with them, just being smarter than them, they destroyed him. They destroyed his legacy and left him a shell of a man by the time he died. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Nick W says, math is math. Well, yeah, of course, math is math, but this is just a, a more uh, intuitive and better way to teach math so kids can understand it quickly and do better and bigger math uh, more often is, is the point of it. It's not changing math. It's just uh, a better way to teach it was his point. But anyway, he's also he was also um, responsible for the quote that I think we I think we said it was the last week or a week before mm -hmm. um, about how the basically to understand the universe, you just have to understand vibration and energy and electricity, which is something we have discovered is probably 100 percent true as much as we can tell with every test that they show it's true that the energy the universe is is energy basically um and vibration and frequency is what drives it so he was way ahead of his time way ahead of his time super advanced similar to da vinci in his how advanced his thought processes were yeah well, I mean, he, it is that simple quote. If you want to understand the universe, you, under, you need to understand energy, frequency, and vibration, right? Um, yep. uh, of course. And another interesting little quote, if we want to get into the quotes about uh, Nikolai Tesla, uh, there's a reporter who came up to uh, Albert Einstein and said, uh, how does it feel to be the smartest man on Earth? And he says, I don't know. You should go ask Nikolai Tesla. <laughs> yep. He sure, that's 100% true. Yeah. He, was, he was basically, he just didn't have the the charisma of say like a uh, edison or any no. of these other, even even einstein in his own weird way was very charismatic he's he somebody you, you wanted to look at and talk to yeah. but tesla wasn't like that Apparently he was all einstein about the, got science. the ladies he did um oh, and yeah. uh you know uh, nikola tesla was an introvert he was uh he was a weirdo he was socially awkward extremely so um uh, unfortunately and he died alone I mean, it's a it's a sad story. Do you uh, think Nikola and, Tesla invented autism, and that's where he got his power? That's probably exactly true. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that uh, is one of the things he was worried about. Um, why he was so worried about unlocking this this technology and giving it to people like Westinghouse and J.P. Morgan is he knew that that could be used as a weapon to cause things like mental def mental you know fubars in the brain, mm -hmm. um, and he didn't want that to happen. So he walked away from that that entire technology by the end of his life. He didn't want anything to do with it. Now, the, here's an interesting little statement from Nick W. I know he's being funny, uh, but that's actually, there's some interesting truth inside that comment here, Nick. Uh, how dare you challenge Common Core math, Chester? Uh, and of course, uh, we, we understand that Common Core math is a dumbing down of mathematics, right? It's, it's, uh, it's taking it, and, and it's, it doesn't matter if you're right. It's just about, did you think about it the right way? which is nonsensical. And we're seeing a lot of this yes. kind of nonsense go on these days with kids. They don't care if they're right or wrong anymore. They just want to know, did they think the process out and did they feel good about themselves? So someone needs to be slapped hard. <laughs> yes. Right? Because yeah, you're it, it is interesting. Through. Math is math. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's interesting because <clears throat> math, math is math. And it doesn't really matter as long as the answer is right. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Now, it can matter in some formulation if you get into the long form, you know, really advanced stuff. You want to make sure you're doing the process as correctly as possible. But as long as the basics are correct and you get to the same answer, that's all that matters. 
everything else is tertiary to that and this this common core stuff like you were just talking about is a complete obfuscation of that reality of math it's basically taking the absolute of math which is you know one plus one equals two and turning it into nonsense one plus one still equals two that's a law of the universe but they make it so convoluted to get to that very basic thing that it just it it makes you not want to think outside the box is what it does AC and DC. That's funny. Um, uh, yeah, no, uh, very good point. Uh, this over here actually is um, uh, a picture taken off. Uh, I'm just trying, kind of showing uh, a Tesla versus Edison. Uh, but this is actually taking off of a, a board game, a pretty cool board game made about the bad, the duel of the currents between Tesla and Edison. Um, uh, it's interesting. And of course, uh, you know, I do think it's time for a bit of levity. Uh, so let's uh, let's turn it over to Booster. And Booster, tell us about what you know about Tesla. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did quite a bit of research on this, so I was looking up about how I was a little bit confused, right? So mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out how Nikola Tesla is. Where did you say he died? Where did he die? I think it was in Chicago. Yeah, so, actually. Right. Yeah, okay. Chicago. So I'm trying yeah. to figure out when he cloned himself to become David Bowie and star himself in The Prestige. I'm trying to piece it all together, <laughs> but. And then, oh boy! And in the end, he couldn't find a cure to cancer, so that was a real shame. But mm. Uh, mm, I think that's okay. all really fascinating stuff. So what you're trying to tell us you, is your entire understanding of Nikola Nikola Tesla is coming out of the movie The Prestige with Hugh Jackman. Hmm. Oh yeah, I love Hugh Jackman. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go, guys. There you go. Knowledge from the source. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, epic rap battles. That's funny when I just saw it on the other page. Uh, those things are funny. Uh, but uh, all right, thank you very much, Booster. If you have any other things you want to come up and uh, pipe up about, you just tell, let us know. Uh, and Yeah, I'll uh, do some more research yeah, right you, now. You do that. You do that. Yeah. Uh, so, Denali, <laughs> dude. Well, I think Dendaro touched a lot about what Tessa has done. Um, we did mention one of those connections with our current president that his uncle, mm -hmm. um, John Trump, was part of the uh, scientists working with the X-ray, was the inventor, one of the inventors or leading inventors of the X-ray machine. And he was one of the people working with Tesla for the uh, death ray as well. Um, they also talked about TFT talk that Tesla figure out time travel and there's a conspiracy dealing with uh, Donald Trump and his son Barron because there's a book in the past talking about the adventures of Barron Trump, which kind of their people are pointing out this has a lot of similarity of today's uh, well, going on. And that story is contemporary to Tesla himself. Mm hmm. So, but one of the things that he was developing as well, besides the unlimited replies he also advanced um radio transmissions mm -hmm. so with radar he was working uh with the government on that with uh advancing radar technology um and a lot of secret uh um machines and secret inventions and projects i think you touched about briefly which was uh uh harpa in alaska which was harp learning yeah. about harp yeah which was uh, learning how to channel energy into uh, rudimentary EMPs before the nuclear <laughs> discovery of the nuclear bomb and everything and disabling communications with electricity as well. And it was shut down. But it appears to be that that project went to DARPA and that has a connection to that project as well. Mm -hmm. Um, another part of it, which I was talking about, was there's connections with him with the Philadelphia experiment mm -hmm. because he were using technologies in the vessels um, that Tesla has invented about using magnetic um, fields to isolate the vessel from the current time, which, again, goes back to the compare. Uh, contemporary theory that I've mentioned about Donald Trump having time travel and such of that. 
and you know that is a, a a very much a conspiracy theory right there and this is mm -hmm. tft uh but right. uh, the, it is very interesting to me that uh, donald trump is so connected to nikola tesla uh through his uncle and uh, there's a lot of people saying that the reason he was in those countries like croatia serbia and things like that and of course in mm -hmm. ultimately marrying uh, uh, some uh, always marrying women from that part of the world. I mean, this is a third mm -hmm. wife, but they're all from the same area, right? Uh, has right. to do with uh, him and him spending a lot of time over there uh, has uh, to do with uh, his actually having Nikola Tesla's papers. Now, this is a conspiracy theory. I don't know if there's any proof whatsoever, but it is interesting. Right, right. And then what's amazing about it is Tesla is also connected to the mysterious uh, tons, uh, tons, uh, Gusta explosion of 1908, where there was a cosmic explosion that happened in Siberia, um, about something that happens there where it strips all the lands and there's a shockwave and nobody knows what it is, but it, the black, but it looks like a nuclear blast without the radiation in there, which is kind of weird and strange. Uh, and people have been saying this is, it's a meteor that struck the earth, that area. Uh, but there's also, uh, oddly enough, a facility where Tesla was working on a secret pot project right there as well. So it's kind of crazy. Um, uh, one, of the re one of the theories that they were saying that Tesla was working on a wireless uh, torpedo, uh, torpedo uh, that he was using ro a remote control uh, for the U.S. government over there, or testing out the death ray. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of weird what's going on over there. So those are some of the things that I wanted to bring up as well. Well, um, it's interesting you mentioned the death ray, uh, as did uh, uh, Thundero. Um, and uh, uh, oh, here we go, that's the picture I want. Um, and uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because, mm -hmm. um, you know, actually after the war, uh, there was a Japanese scientist. I I didn't go and get get it to uh, uh, give his name, but uh, there was a Japanese scientist who was actually working mm -hmm. on a death ray for Japan, uh, and uh, the American government did capture that guy and all his information. And he oddly he was part of Patri uh, uh, Project Paperclip as well. It wasn't just German scientists, right? Uh, because the right. Japanese were doing a bunch of weird stuff too. Uh, but uh, when when questioned and talked about you know where do you, where where are you getting this idea of this kind of death ray, he says, oh, I got it from Nikola Tesla. Right. So even the Japanese were using Tesla uh, technology in World War II to try to win the war. It's interesting. Uh, but, yeah, you know. he was very, um, very open with what he had discovered. He like I said, he believed it should be shared. He believed knowledge should be shared. That was that was a real power. Mm -hmm. So it was spread all over the world very quickly. Yeah. Um, and. You know, uh, these things are all well uh, well and good, but I I'm going to go ahead and give uh, my little dissertation here, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the interesting thing about Nikola Tesla is that, for the most part, everyone att attaches him to electricity. Uh, and, uh, of course, in, in, in a good reason, because, you know, he's the guy that gave us the current that we use today, and uh, there were many things he did that were electrically uh, based. But the thing that people don't understand is that's not what kind of scientist he was, though. He actually was a sound scientist and dealing with sound and studying sound. And, and there's another interesting thing. We go on that Wikipedia, which was on earlier, which Wikipedia has its uses. But uh, if you go through there and you look and you try to find who were are, who are his influences, who were his teachers, who were the people that directed him, well, you don't see a lot of information. As a matter of fact, it's like this mysterious mind just showed up uh, at uh, at Edison's uh, uh, workshop and uh, said, "Hey, can I have a job?" And that's that's kind of how people started off the conversation. But actually, he did have mentors, and uh, his mentors that he had are uh, now Nikola. Nikola, they haven't been able to hide him. Uh, even though they tried to destroy his name for a long time, people didn't know who he was. They didn't remember who he was. But he's been brought back into the uh, co modern consciousness, right? But his mentors and stuff have been almost completely wiped out. Go and try to find, do a search for John Keeley. Go try to find pictures, try to find information. It's very hard, right? But John Keeley was his probably his biggest mentor. 
And John Keeley, of course, is famous for his research and science into sound. Uh, John Keeley could do amazing things. He could take large boulders and pulver pulverize them down into lit literally talcum powder uh, 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 consistency with sound. He could levitate those same boulders off the ground with sound. He was doing amazing things with sound. And this is really what Nikola Tesla is. He is a sound scientist, a sound engineer. And, uh, of course, from that energy, vibration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing about this is that people don't understand that everything is sound. This is the inter uh, a very interesting point that Nikolai, Nikola was trying to teach us over and over and over, and no one listened. Right. And because, you know, it's it, it, we mentioned this before, but the, every culture in the world, when it talks about the creation of things, what does it say? God spoke. God sang. Uh, it's always about sound. Right. And uh, Nikola understood this. And all his technologies were actually coming out of sound, not electricity. Because the, the, the center, the beginning of his understanding was that sound is everything. And uh, you say, well, this doesn't make sense. So what are you talking about? Well, let, let me throw a few things out for you uh, that you might not have known. Uh, this right here is called a toroidal field. And a toroidal field, uh, uh, science is starting to understand more and more that the entire universe is made of these things. Because they scale. Uh, whether it be the toroidal field that is your eye or the toroidal field that makes up your cells or the toroidal field that is a galaxy or a potentially a universe itself. Uh, these are actually the building blocks in the universe right here, not these other things they try to tell you. I saw someone in the chat earlier had said something about black holes and lights can't escape it. Well, then how come they put out these beautifully artistically rendered pictures just a couple weeks ago? We found a black hole and they painted it up nice and looked really pretty and there's light. But light can't escape it. Make up your mind. You know, pick a lane, right? Uh, but the, the the reality is this is where science is going, and this is what science is finding. And it's, it's stunning what we're seeing being done with sound, right? Not only 100-plus years ago, 150 years ago, we were seeing amazing, amazing things going on. We're seeing them going on right now. Do you realize there are scientists right now that will take a, 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 will take a, a test tube, right? Fill it full of water, just water normal water, and they're using various frequencies of sound, and by bombarding that uh, uh, beat, that little you know test tube of water, they're actually getting DNA to form in it. L let me back up for a second. Let me say it again. We have a little glass that has water in it, and they're using various frequencies of sound, and it's causing DNA to form in it. Should I repeat okay, it again? What, yeah, but what has any of the test field that... <laughs> What does this any has, of us have to do with the donuts you have on screen? This is a this is a Taurus, dude. Uh, I, I just keep up, Booster. Uh, but uh, no. uh, we're also seeing, uh, you know, sound uh, uh, can be used to create fire. Sound can be put out fire. Sound can do everything you think that uh, and various technology and science can be applied to. Sound, it actually is the source of it. And it's all working inside these shapes, these toroidal shapes. And they're very, very interesting because if we go and take this toroidal shape or just the cones that are making up the center of it, we find these throughout history, especially in ancient times. We see them in all these hieroglyphics and images and stuff. And people for a long time, what are these cones? What are these guys holding these cones? What's all these cones? What are these weird Taurus shapes? What's going on? Well, they seems like they seem to understand something we're just starting to rediscover, right? Because, you know, there's a couple of little things. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, let's show you this right here. What is this? This is an electron. Oh, wow. Very nice. And, and here on the right side, we have a nice little picture. Uh, did you know that the electron is actually a theoretical particle. Did you know that? Yes. The idea of how it yes. works? Right. But if you ask the average person, like, yeah, electrons real. No, they're not. It's a theoretical idea. It's not proven at all, as is hardly anything in science proven. It's all theory. Now, I know they come out and they present it to you as this is real. This is it. The way they show these programs and stuff, you know, Nova and all these other things like that. This is the truth. It's not the truth. It's all theory. They just present it to you as it is truth. And this is something that Einstein and Edison were really good at. They're really good at selling that crap, right? But if you look here on the right, that is actually the image of what we would perceive as an electrical uh, pulse that would come out of a thing we could call an electron. Uh, but actually, if you look at it just for a second, you'll see what is that? That is a toroidal field, right? It doesn't look anything like this. Let me show you another theoretical particle. 
the atom. Oh no, Chester, you're wrong. That's I, I learned that in school. That's a real thing. We've seen those. We can document those. <gasps> no, you can't. That's a theoretical particle. It's theory, right? It sounds shocking to you, right? I understand that. Uh, but the it simply is the truth. This is theory. You just either didn't read the foot footnote or the textbook didn't even bother to put it in there. Because that's what they do a lot of times, right? Uh, but uh, these things don't make sense. Because when we go back and we actually find the ability to look at things and understand what they, what we're seeing, you know, describing them scientifically is another, another, uh, another situation, which is what this on the left, this electron is trying to do. Uh, but what we're actually seeing everywhere we go are toroidal fields. So you'll say, well, what's the point? If this is the truth, is this is where we're going, and this has been known for quite a while, why in the world do we keep pushing on this damn gravity crap? What's the deal? What's the whole point about this nuclear uh, physics and this, this super ultra genius guy called Albert Einstein? Right, and he was a smart guy. Uh, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. About 500 years ago, there was a there was a uh, uh, a bunch of information had come up out of the Crusades from centuries earlier, uh, particularly into a place in Spain called Toledo. And when they went into Toledo, they found a whole ton of libraries. Now, normally, when the Crusaders went into some place and they found a an enemy held city and they found books and stuff, they just burn them. You know, it's not just the Muslims that do this. The, we did this, too. Uh, if you wanted to talk about real horror, go see what the Christians did down in the Library of Alexandria or the Christians did down in South America. It's disgusting. Uh, but nevertheless, they usually burned it. But when they went to the generals and said, hey, you know, we got a lot of libraries here, and these are books we've never even heard of. And they, they made a, a, very, a very important decision at that moment. They said, keep them safe. And they didn't burn them. And this is where the flood of information started coming into Europe, which had been in a dark age for, we talk about a dark age of a couple hundred years, nonsense. Europe was in a Christian dark age for over a thousand years, right? Knowledge was not allowed. Learning, advancement was not allowed. God speaks, God says. That's what happened to us, right? But these, these crusaders who decided to not burn libraries actually opened the door. And when we had all this information, you know, all these great Greek philosophers and Arab, Middle Eastern, uh, you know, Arabic, Persian uh, uh, philosophers and uh, Egyptian stuff, all of that was in this, these libraries. And it started flooding in and you started getting this, this, this discord, and this communication between the, the, the intelligent, intelligentsia of, uh, of Europe. And a lot of them got in trouble. Some got killed even for talking this blasphemy of science. But little by little, it started pushing back. And about 500 years ago, it had got to the point that these people wanted to fight back against the Catholics. They wanted to fight back against the church, the Protestants, whatever, the Christians. And they wanted to take their freedom. And they started fighting that. And it's at that time that an interesting little particle came into the thinking of humanity. This particle that is this earth. You ever heard of Carl Sagan? You ever seen his uh, interesting little uh, show he had back in the 70s and they tried to redo it with a Tyson here recently? Uh, which it was all right. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, what does he say in that? He's saying we are on this insignificant planet in this insignificant solar system, in this insignificant part of the galaxy, in this insignificant part of the universe. We are nothing. We are but a particle floating in space. And this is the actual inception of the particle physics. Because as they went forward in their battle to destroy Christianity, take back their freedom and knowledge, which is admirable unto itself. But the problem is every time someone fights and tries to make something uh, become equal, they never stop there. They always go to the point of revenge. We see this all the time. And this is what's happened. And a lot of people want to point to Darwin as being the beginning of it. Nonsense. It's hundreds of years before uh, Darwin when this, non this, this crap started. Right, And it has been continually going on and on and on to the point of revenge. They want to destroy the church, destroy the Christians, and they're still doing it. Right, uh, And uh, this particle that you see in front of you, which we call a planet, a round planet, uh, it's a, a very interesting thing. Because as time went on, they started pushing more and more and more. And then, of course, we know with Einstein, Planck, and all his other uh, scientific buddies, what are they pushing? They're pushing particle physics. Right, and if you want to understand where particle physics come from, you have to study the the this inception from the point of the Earth is round and follow this concept of constantly trying to fight against what the Bible says and Christianity itself, because the Bible tells you that the Earth is flat. Right, that's what the Bible says, and they had to find something as opposite opposite of it, and they had to find something that made us not unique. 
this is a very interesting thing. Um, but as we've gone along, we found now in our modern science that you can't deny it. And so it says that uh, Chester's trying to push plasma science. Yeah, because that's the future. That is the future of uh, of science is plasma because this is what we can experiment in laboratories this is what we can prove and we're seeing proofs coming left and right all the time and there's a very interesting little study that was done a few years ago where i'll end this because i could go on for hours to be honest with you but i'm trying to keep this very abbreviated uh but there was a, a few years back we had an experiment and the scientists involved were really beside themselves they were not happy uh because unfortunately what they found is not what they wanted to find, but at least they were honorable enough to post their studies anyway, because they went and they were using sound uh, to try to find what the universe looks like by taking the sound and making a map of the sound of the universe. And you know what they found at the end of that research? Earth is sitting slap dab in the middle of existence. It's not some insignificant thing sitting on the side. It's not in some unnecessarily, no one cares about arm of some galaxy. It's sitting slap dab in the middle of everything. And of course, that is exactly what the gods have been telling us for millennia, right? And uh, these scientists, good for them for putting that out and saying that. And they showed their scientific finding. It was good science, too. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from the ideas that modern science is showing us that Earth is actually in the middle of this incredible toroidal, uh, toroidal uh, 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 you know, construct, this field, right? Uh, and how do we go from the understanding that science is starting to show that reality is not what we think it is at all? They keep hinting at things left and right. I mean, think about in the past couple of decades, how uh, we talk about simple energies like uh, that come out of water and things like that. In the past couple of, uh, 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 a couple of uh, a few years, how many stories have you seen come out of NASA and other places showing how much water there is in the universe? Actually talking about water vapors coming out of suns like bullets. Talking about uh, nebula bl literally bleeding out water at incredible amounts of uh, 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 um, rates. Uh, talk, we're talking about water that's coming out of some of these nebulae is so big that a simple drop of it would literally flood our solar system. Right? This understanding yep. of what is what is changing radically. And you say, what does this have to do with Nikola Tesla? This has everything to do with him. Because this guy tried to tell us from the beginning, sound is what matters. Sound creates everything. Our existence is sound. Do you know that when you breathe, how do you think the oxygen goes from the air into your blood? Now, this is probably something you never studied, but I'm going to tell you how it works. When you breathe in, and that air goes into your lungs, the sound the air makes going into your lungs is what oxygenates and activates that, uh, that oxygen that's coming in that makes it uh, 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 you know, excited. And then it, because of it's excited, it is broken down and the oxygen uh, molecules fall in to the uh, blood capillaries that's sitting on the end. So without the sound of you simply breathing, you would be dead where you stand. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. So, so if you're saying if we are able to make sound in space, we can breathe in space? I'm saying space is not at all what you think it is. I'm saying this nonsense about E equals MC squared, gravity, vacuums, it's all nonsense. <laughs> it's complete well, nonsense. I'm, I'm and it's, I'm, Chester, it, you're beginning to scare me. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> It is interesting because Tesla did literally say that to understand the universe, you have to understand vibration, and sound is just vibration. I mean, effectively. Oh, I'm that very familiar level. with vibration, believe me. <laughs> we know. <laughs> and uh, he says the Earth is a pyramid shape. Actually, these two pyramids are sitting uh, on top of each other, which of course is a torus. Uh, all structures are. Uh, but the the thing of the problem with this is we understand how toruses work, and we understand that that they're at the the point of connection of the torus, where the two cones are touching in the center, basically. Uh, this is a field of energy that is infinite into itself, which is in itself an amazing statement. But it's been scientifically proven that that is what is happening there. It is an infinite uh, expression of energy. Right. And each toroidal field we see, there's always this plane that is happening between the two cones. There's this plane. And if we see this everywhere, go look at your galaxies. Where are they? They're a disk. Go out and look at all these images they talk, they talk about and they show in the universe and all these things they talk about. It's always a disk, a plane, a disk, a disk, a disk over and over and over and over. So if everything out there is this flat disk thing that they're talking about, why would Earth be any different? 
Now, this is a strange sideways argument for flat earth. I get that. Uh, but here's the thing. Those flat earth people, they are not really uh, 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 argue, making the right argument. Because I just don't think they they understand. They just some people that saw some mistake and they're just sticking to it. They're not actually making the proper argument, right? Uh, and I'm not ready to get into the flat Earth uh, thing yet, but uh, it, it is a stunning uh, understanding when you look at what Nikola Tesla has reinduced, uh, reintroduced to the world. Because this is knowledge that obviously is known. Because if you go back in the ancient times, they knew all about this. They knew all about it. But Nikola Tesla is the one to try to open our eyes to this stuff. Was he even aware of how deep the knowledge he had to offer was? I don't know. But he did re reintroduce it to us. And now it is taking off like mad. And I do realize that the uh, main scientific community is doing everything they can to knock it down and go back to their damn particle uh, that they can't stop talking about. And it's all about their damn particles. Um, I understand that. But they're going to lose this fight. Because what's happening in the plasma theories that are happening, these guys are going into their laboratories and they're reproducing stuff. Do you realize just a few years ago, someone actually created uh, an a, a artificial sun in a laboratory? And it was literally, literally 9 million times more efficient than the sun we have. Yeah, let, me, let me say that number again. 9 million times more efficient. And they did it in a lab. They are doing these research yep. all over the place, and they are tearing apart Einsteinian Newton theories. Tearing it apart. Well, we're extremely close, and by extremely close, probably a decade or two out, maybe a little more. But that's pretty close in science of this scale to fusion, actual fusion power. Um, once that happens, and it will probably happen in our lifetimes, the whole world changes. If yeah. we can get fusion to work, that that's in basically limitless power that won't we can't we pretty much can't run out of power if we have fusion generators everywhere it would change everything rapidly mm -hmm. into a to the point that things like you know actually going to the stars is possible because now we have a way of generating power basically infinitely um it changes everything and we're very close and that's one of the things you're talking about is mm -hmm. they've been they've been doing this now they can basically create an approximation of what is a, a star on this planet. They have. Which they is have. terrifying. I know, which is they terrifying. They did in Europe. But they can do it, and they're getting ready. I think it's by 2025, they estimate they'll have it on in France, uh, the ITER one, which they plan on starting to actually provi provide power by 2035 or something like that. So they're close. They're close enough that they can make that assessment and not be laughed away by investors. Um it's getting real close and your what you were just talking about that's what they're that's what they're looking at but they're obviously looking at other things with it too yeah but i mean what the, that little uh, you know introduction to the concept that i just threw out you guys get it i mean you catch it you see oh what, no i'm not getting see? any of this this is brutal is is it really you're, make, you're making boost you're making booster learn which i know he doesn't do well. i do apologize. i don't like learning it annoys me <laughs> well thunder you get what i'm saying right Absolutely. I actually tend to agree. I, I don't believe that we know anything. I think all of the greatest men minds to ever live all agreed on one thing, and that's that we don't know anything. We think we do. That's we right. have great. We have some theories. We have workable theories. We can make certain things do this, this, and this. But we don't know why it happens. Not really. We we can eventually. You get down to it. Just does. That's the only answer they can give you. Mm -hmm. um, if you keep regressing far enough, well, yeah, because it just does. Well, that's not a scientific answer at all. That's not even an answer. Um, it, it is interesting. I was looking up uh, uh, Keeley, like you talked about, John, John Keeley. Keeley. And yes, you, you are correct. Uh, back in the 1800s, he invented a very rudimentary version of an anti-gravity machine. That's right. That is insane that, that we have had people who could do this for that long. And we still mm -hmm. don't have jetpacks. Why don't we have jetpacks? That's the real conspiracy. I want that a jetpack. I want to fly. Why I want don't fly in the a, sky? Why don't I have a jetpack? And what does it have to do with gravity and pyramid Earth and also like plasma? 
Well, uh, the reason you don't have a jetpack is because they don't want you to have jetpack because they want to sell you everything they can on every penny of every dollar that is possible for them to suck out of you on the most inane garbage that is possible for them pr to produce. Uh, that's oh. why. Uh, we don't live in a free world. You have zero freedom. It's funny to me when people talk about the, how they have freedom. And it's like, how is that? You don't own anything. What do you own? You own a house? Do you really? Well, don't pay your taxes and see how quickly you own that house. How about that car? Uh, how about your freedom, right? You don't pay those taxes, you're mm -hmm. what happens to you? You have no freedom. We're, no, we understand. are the least free people in the history of man, actually. I understand perfectly. The argument is, if we're so free, then why don't we have jetpacks? I That's, get it. You got it. You got it. You know, yeah. you know, an interesting thing that's actually starting to develop out of the uh, plasma sciences is a lot of times we use this word electromagnetic, right? When we're talking about uh, energies and things magnets. like that. Uh, well, mag well, magnets are extremely important studies, dude. It's very important science, actually. Uh, we're starting to find we could do a lot of things with magnets. But this is an interesting thing that's coming out of the plasma scientists uh, so that it's actually we need to change the term. It's not electromagnetic. It's magnoelectric. Now, if you understand what that means and you take a moment and think about it, you can do a little bit of research, that would blow your mind, dude. That simple little change. It's not electromagnetic. It's magnoelectric. Wow. I would venture to guess one of the reasons that it's inverted like that, and you're right from the, re the science is saying that it's the inverse mm -hmm. of what we say all the time, but I would venture to guess it's because we can create magnetism with electricity. So people assume that, that go that's the, you know, that's mm -hmm. the horse before the cart. So yeah. you put the electro part first, but the more we go deeper and deeper into it, we realize that no, that's just another side effect of what's already happening behind yeah. it. The sound um, is actually so, what's causing magnetism. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really shocking. Uh, I mean, I made the little mention about your lungs because I wanted to give an understanding of how how entwined sound is in everything you do. Um, uh, it, it's just amazing. Like uh, when we talk when we talk about like how you see and a lot of us, you know, you understand how you do data. It's, it's not an optical lens. It's a data is being taken into your brain, going that back into the pineal gland and the pineal gland is uh, processing that and uh, giving you an image. Right. Uh, but um uh, in actuality, the actual noise that is happening around you, which you can't hear, is actually what is allowing the toroidal, the toruses that are your eyes. I don't know if you ever noticed this. Look at your eye. It's a torus, right? Um, the way it's catching all that information is through the vibrations of the sound that is going on around you. It, or interpreting you, the sounds. To it is. Realize, but if you yeah. actually could somehow put yourself in a place that had no sound, I mean, which I don't know if possible, but if you could find a way to build something like that, you would be blind, deaf, and dumb. You literally would it's be unaware of the universe. That you say that because there are people who have taken extreme hallucinogens um, and they've said that they can literally see sound and hear color. And they don't know how to describe it other than that, what they're experiencing. I've never mm -hmm. experienced it myself, but that's, you know, millions of people who, who take these extremely strong psychedelics have said the same thing, that they can literally uh, see sound and hear color, and they don't know how else to describe it than that. It's an it's just interesting that you, you say that that's what we're doing. That's what our eyes are literally doing. That is what they're translating, doing. Yeah. Translating vibration in, it is. in yeah. frequency. Yeah. everything works like that uh why does your heart beat it's a simple question why does it beat go ask a scientist a normal you know mainstream einsteinian scientist why does your heart beat they can't answer that question they have no clue they don't even know why an electron turns their supposed theoretical particle they have no clue right but uh but your heart of course is uh a vi is working because it is uh, interacting with the, the, the sounds around it, and it is making its own sound. Your heartbeat itself is actually what causes your body to function. And this is why when you see uh, all these people trying to find ways to heal themselves and uh, all these kind of medicines and all this kind of crap, uh, but if you go to try to find the most successful ways to heal your uh, body, it's always sound-related right? Uh, a lot of those sound therapies, chanting, all that kind of stuff is actually really good for you. It sounds silly. It sounds goofy to sit there and do yoga and chant, but it's actually about the sound and it is balancing the sound in your body because the center of the sound that your body makes is coming from your heart first, right? 
I don't know. Absolutely. Is any is any of this sinking sinking in at all? I'm kind of curious. Uh, no. <laughs> Not for a booster. That's that's a that's a four long question. Well, I got that. The sound is making your heart beat, and we can see it if we take drugs. Okay, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing good. Yeah, uh, chanting. Yeah. Okay, Nick says. I'm following along. I'm following along. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, but it's it's very fascinating to me because you know uh, uh, the simple understanding that Nikolai Tesla is actually a sound scientist is where he's coming from. He's not a, a, the the electricity is a side effect of his study actually. Uh, and most people don't know that. They just think he's some science, uh, super science electricity guy. It's not truth. Uh, it's actually the side effect of his studies, his understanding. This is why when he talks about science, he talks about the ideas of vibration and sound and how energy is created out of these things, right? Um, and uh, once again, I implore you to go do a little bit of study and to find out exactly what sound can do. Uh, we can we can levitate things, we can break things, we can control fire, we can control weather, we can control electricity. Uh, we can, and did you know that uh, well, since uh, we've shifted from the electromagnetic to the magnoelectric uh, understanding, now we understand why we're seeing these scientists coming out and finding that everything is magnetic. Huh? But yeah, it's true. They've been doing a lot of uh, studying into mag magnetism and finding that it actually everything is. Wood, blood, water, etc. It's all magnetic, right? And that's because you have the, the, if you're using some kind of ferrous metal, well, then there's a particular kind of naturally occurring uh, uh, material that actually uh, will allow you to be magnetic with it. And this is what brought us to the modern magnets. Uh, but actually, if you use sound magnets and things like that, you can move things all over the place. With magnet with magnetism, it's pretty impressive. And then if you go back to like uh, one of the things that always comes up is Coral Castle. Uh, I think down in Florida, down in your area there, uh, uh, Danelli. Uh, Coral mm -hmm. Castle, of course, was built by this crazy dude, and he had these huge coral blocks of stone. And he built the whole this huge castle type of thing all by himself, and people saw him building it. And he basically was floating giant rocks through the air, holding ice cream cones. Is what people said it looked like. Right. And uh, uh, this is a whole nother part I didn't get into, and I'm not going to get into it because it's too long conversation. But uh, go study and see what cones do. Right. Understand how much uh, everything around us has cones, like a um, uh, simple little diversion, uh, for instance, uh, insects. There are a whole bunch of insects that fly around, and, and science has not understood how they fly because they're way too big to fly. They can't create enough generation, uh, enough generated wind force like a bird does, uh, in order to to levitate and fly around with their heavy bodies. But yet they do fly. It's been a mystery for a long time. And of course, this mystery has been solved because if you go and look at their wings, their wings are actually made of cones. And what the, what they're doing is they're not flying. They those wings are actually creating sound and the sound is what they're moving around on not the actual power of a wing right and this has been known for decades right this isn't new information so you're, you're telling me birds are banshees birds yep. are do, birds are uh, do you sound as well but birds are using more much more of a muscled flight whereas uh, in a lot uh, insects are actually using sound to fly around the wings are not actually creating propulsion the the flapping of those wings are creating a sound this is why their wings are hollow right uh, because those aren't blood if you look at a, uh, uh, insect wings it looks like it's like blood vessels or something right but it's not it's actually those are hollow tubes and it's creating the sound that's why when an insect comes near you they have all their kind of unique little buzz they have right well it's that buzz that is letting them fly it's not the movement of the wing the wing the movement is just simply to create the sound and once again, this is not new. This is, but this was discovered a long time ago. Uh, but they don't tell you these things. You don't learn these kind of things. They, they, they are constantly trying to stay on their format of teaching you the Newtonian science. It's all about Newtonian science. Of course, Einstein is just an extension of that, as is Hawking. Right. And uh, the, that's the, the, the funniest thing about the whole black holes. And it just makes me laugh because every time they put out an image of a planet or a black hole or a nova or whatever they're showing you, uh, nebula, what have you, it's always an artist rendition of radio data. <laughs> yeah, every time, every single time. It's not optical. It's not. It's, it's an in, art, artistic interpretation. Literally, all those images you see, somebody arted, painted it up. 
literally right it's an interpretation and uh, this just kind of adds more and more on top of the fuel on the fire of these conversations we talk about here on TFT about how everything you think you know is nonsense and uh, and then you have to come back and ask yourself why why is this why is this going on and I'm telling you I think it comes down to this stupid particle right here I really do I think it's just that absolute knee-jerk reaction of trying to escape the the tyranny that was the Christian church and there they've just gone with it and it's become it's become profitable and they just never stopped and I think they're just they're addicted to it and I'm not blaming people like Einstein and Planck and those other dudes that kind of push this forward I'm not those are smart guys that were trying to follow a, a path uh, but they they don't they never could find the path I mean, even Einstein, here's an interesting little thing about this little particle, this theoretical particle called the electron. Even Einstein himself said he doesn't understand the presentation, presented concept of the electron. It doesn't make sense. It does not work scientifically. Even Einstein was on, uh, had said that the electron is a stupid idea. Even him, right? Have you ever heard that comment from him? I bet you haven't. Right? <clears throat> well, it's also the other thing like you're talking about is how much there's people who don't even know who Nikola Tesla is. Um, and it's because that somebody somewhere has decided this is what we're going to teach when it comes to science and history. These are the fields that matter, whether right, wrong or indifferent on those fields. Why are those the fields that matter? Why do I need to know so much about chemistry, but I don't need to know about guys like Nikola Tesla? Why? Why is me as a normal person, I'm going into chemistry to be a chemist or something like that. Yeah, okay, you should know a lot about chemistry. But why does it have to go so in depth on a topic that really largely in my life, I'm probably not going to be too much, you know, involved in, in the actual process mm -hmm. of chemistry, except for when I'm like cooking or something. But, but things like the man who invented the AC induction motor, the, one of the most important inventions of all time, people don't even know that. They don't even know what it is. They just take it all for granted. The man who who created the power system and de devised it that largely was adopted in this country that gave us our, our power grid that is still one of the best in the world. Um, people don't know that. Why? Why are certain things omitted from history and from science, which most – the reality is most science is history. People just don't like to put it that in category, but – what we're learning is from the past. We're learning what these people oh, sure. taught in the past. Usually only researchers are on the cutting edge learning new things. Um, so why is it omitted? Why isn't it talked about largely? I know when I went to school, I never, I don't, I think maybe a couple blips here about Tesla in the AC and stuff like that, but nothing beyond it. No, nothing to the level of Edison. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, you would have thought Edison walked out of heaven and get granted us all life as much as the praise is lauded on him um, for an, a light bulb, which he probably didn't invent. Tesla probably did that too, but that's another topic for another day. Um, it, it's just strange to me that somebody somewhere has decided these are the topics. This is your, this is your box mm -hmm. for children. When your mind is its most pliable and most easy to teach, these are your boxes. And you're not allowed to go outside of these boxes inside this 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 schooling where you're supposed to be taught how to be an adult and how to live well, I, I, the, the idea I thought how to live in a modern society the skills you will need to be a productive citizen yet productive citizens some of the most productive of all time on the very cutting edge whose scientific breakthroughs still to this day were applying in new fields to do new things with like Tesla He's, he's omitted. We, we learn about Einstein. We learn about mm -hmm. all these other guys. At, at de In depth, we learn right. about them. We know their whole story, but Tesla's getting given a couple blurbs. It's insane. Well, it's propaganda is what it is yeah. uh, because these are the uh, these are the magazine cover scientists, right? And they keep throwing like Tyson. Right. Uh, uh, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right. I mean, I don't have anything against the guy in particular, but he's a shill. I mean, come on. Uh, what, what has the guy ever done scientifically? Ever. Nothing. He is just yeah. a shill. And why? Because the modern thinking is uh, we have to promote the diversity. And he is the diversity higher. And he's out there. And good for him. I'm, I'm glad for the opportunities and the money that he can have for his family. That's cool. Uh, 
uh, but uh, he is he's just a face. He's another magazine cover. And there's a lot of people through history that get chosen to be those magazine covers to try to show us how things should be, right? Uh, and I keep coming back to Gandhi, but he's a perfect example. He is this uh, this textbook, uh, you know, a magazine cover uh, uh, character. Uh, because if you actually dig into Gandhi, you'll find that was a real shithead, right? He was not a good human. He was. Uh, he he talked about peace and 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 nonviolence. The dude killed how many people? Uh, how many black people? He couldn't stand black people, right? He was extremely bigoted. He couldn't stand the lower caste in the Indian system. Uh, the dude slept with little girls. He was good buddies with Adolf Hitler, etc., uh, etc. Et you know, no one tells you this about Gandhi. Oh no, he's this great man of peace. He wasn't. He was a political no, right. guy Why that was trying to Gandhi? make money. And uh, and gain power and control. Chester didn't do it to Gandhi. Gandhi did it to himself Gandhi by being a, to himself. a complete shit heel. Right. <laughs> oh man. Right. But it's what because do you think he, he got assassinated. Well, and he was chosen to be the face of a thing, and we see this happen all of all of the time. And yeah, Tyson is a science entertainer. He is, and I have nothing against Neil deGrasse Tyson. I find him quite entertaining, actually. Um, he shills things hard, uh, but I think he's, and I have no problem with him. I, ho- I wish him all the success in the world uh, because I understand what he what he is. Right. He's just the next face and there'll be someone after him and there will be others. They always do this. So like Hawkin, he is a face that dude uh, took and wasted his entire life and produced nothing, by the way. Right. Go and sit, go down and uh, sit and see what, what did Hawkin actually offer to the scientific world? What did he actually offer? Right. He offered black. Nothing. Holes. Nothing. Right. And we know even from Einstein himself that black hole idea was was nonsense because he was just trying to find a way to make the math work and here's the thing here we are sitting a couple hundred years after the inception of these ideas and they still can't make the math work and they keep adding layers of stuff black holes super black holes black matter dark matter they keep going on and on and on they can't make the math work you know why because it's not the right math right it is not the right science. The right science is being shown very clearly is in the direction of plasma science. Now, do these guys know everything right now? Of course they don't. But they are on the right track. That's for damn sure. Uh, because they're inventing and creating and experimenting things left and right. Success after success after success. And how long is it going to take before this becomes mainstream? I don't know. But I do know that every year more scientists go, more scientists go and join that 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 theory and go join that group because that is where the science is happening so you know correct yeah basically you have a lot of people who are fantastic marketers which is a funny way of saying propagandists um all marketing is propaganda if you understand where marketing comes from the very the very father of modern day marketing and advertising you would understand very deeply and very quickly that you are literally being propagandized to and brainwashed through right. marketing all the time, constantly. That's what it is. Okay. Um, now, there's a there's a, a good way to do that, and there's an evil way to do that. Mostly, we ban the evil way, but it's still that's what it is. And so, the reason why it's important that people know very little about guys like Tesla, and there's more like Keeley. People should know about Keeley. People should know a lot about him. If he's inventing things that are basically anti grav machines in the 1800s, what? How have we not perfected that by now? That's a hundred. That's almost 200 years ago when he when he started doing it. Um, what's the what's the holdup? What's the deal? Yeah. What, what? Let's get on that. You know, that could change the world. Could you imagine how easy it would be to do things if we could just you know, like it, like in uh, Star Trek or one of them, just put a thing under it and it just lifts it up and carries it for you. Like you don't have to worry about heavy loads anymore. You just have this little little pad you can put under there and it lifts it up and moves it around for you. Well, yeah. But um, there's a reason that, that things are cut off where they're cut off. And it's because, and George Carlin, I think, said it best, whether you like him or not, they, they want people just smart enough to run the machines and just dumb enough not to ask, not to ask any questions. Sure. That's what they. That's what these things are. They're mass factories of ignorance. Our school systems are, and our education systems, just shrouded with knowledge. It's it's brilliant actually how they're operated, um, but also tragic. 
it is. But I, I think, you know, before we get, uh, uh, before we kind of leave things as, oh, it is uh, a, this absolute tragedy of uh, sad, 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 super sadness, because I, I can hear Booster weeping. Um, uh, I think we need to take a moment and back it up a little bit. Uh, because, yes, the things we're saying are either true or at least pointing in the truthful direction, right? Uh, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, right? Because, uh, yes, there's constant propaganda, there's constant control, there's constant taxing and manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they just passed the damn uh, uh, air tax, basically taxing people for breathing. They call it a carbon tax, but that's not what it is. Uh, but in the end, we have to look at it like this. At least... They have created a system that allows you to be happy inside your slavery, right? Uh, you are allowed to freely move around and go get your tacos and uh, uh, your McDonald's and your other useless stuff, which, of course, is all uh, uh, part of that big system. But at least you're allowed to be happy and free inside of it. I don't want us to uh, be all doom and gloom here because it's not like uh, we have uh, jack boots and uh, machine guns on our back. Uh, although if you make a couple of mistakes, you would have that. Uh, but you know what I mean? So I don't want it to be, think so, be it's so negative. Uh, I think what uh, I personally am trying to do is just enlighten you to go and research yourself. Check it out yourself. You don't have to believe a word I say. Uh, I want you to go out and find that out on your own and see that there are uh, there's a lot more to understand and contemplate than what has simply been thrown to you by the ma mainstream media. Uh, uh, Joe here says, uh, the smarter you are, uh, uh, you more uh, the more you're capable of rationalizing and rationalizing away bad things. I guess I am doing that a little bit, uh, but um, uh, I am just don't want it to be too, too negative. Uh, uh, you can't go, you can't hack a Casio watch, but if you could, you couldn't make it do much. You can hack a smartphone and make it do more and hacks a desktop and make uh, uh, make that do even more. Yeah, that is true. A lot of the things we are given in, is all part of the control system. This is true. Uh, but um, but nevertheless, please go and research it. Please go and check out uh, all these things going on in plasma science and see exactly how amazing it is. And, and understand that when I talk about toroidal fields and uh, you know, with the toruses and sound and things like that, this is the deep end, the bleeding edge of science right now. That is. And it's absolutely stunning what they're finding that they can do with de uh, do with sound. And once again, let me repeat what I said two or three times before. There are scientists right now who are taking glass uh, bottles filled with water, so submitting sound to them, and creating DNA in the water. Can we can we accept that that is just ridiculous levels of science? Uh, reality is stranger than science. Science has gone too far. We've gone too far. We have to go back. <laughs> yeah, but it also might explain something, right? Because once again, in any religion you have, God sang or God spoke and it took place. Now we have people that are actually at the point of taking sound and creating DNA. You talk about where does DNA come? Well, I guess it's a beautiful soup of sound. It's a, literally an orchestra. Right, because if they can create basic DNA inside a water inside water just with sound, my God, dude, where do you think that's going to go? Can you guys fathom what I'm saying? Yeah, probably. Uh, no. uh, probably. <laughs> not not even remotely. Probably nowhere good. Probably could, know we're good at or all. it could be amazing. We probably have some bumps along the way, but it could be amazing things in the future with that. Yeah, I mean, you have scientists, for instance. Um, uh, there's a, there are scientists right now that are using sound uh, to destroy cancer cells, right? Um, yep. So instead of going and getting yourself with all this chemotherapy, having cutting into your body and cutting hunks of your flesh out, uh, pieces of your brain, pieces of your lungs or whatever, there's actual science that is going on right now that is using sound to destroy those things. And it uh, and they do it pretty quickly in the course of a few minutes, actually. Right. And uh, there, it's just all about the right frequency. Right. And there's a lot of science that's going on understanding that every disease dis-ease. Right. I mean, this word disease that we kind of have this image in our head, but it simply means be uh, uh, out of normal. 
right? Disease, right? We have mm-hmm. seen a lot of uh, doctors using sounds and finding that uh, seemingly every disease that we have can be cured with the right frequency. Wow. Interesting. Well, it, uh, another interesting thing is that a lot of the hi, George. large, hi, everybody, a lot of the large scale patterns that you see around the world, uh, something along the lines of crop circles, but in the bigger in scale, uh, all those designs are actually based on the sound waves. Mm-hmm. A certain, uh, uh, you, hit a, you hit a certain sound uh, pitch, you'll get those patterns yeah. that you see They're only from satellite photos. Now, interesting thing is, how did the people so long ago were able to figure out the sound wave of, of it and put it into practical use? Well, that is mystery. Well, George, the ancients understood sound, stone, and water much better than we do today, obviously. We, can, we see yes. the evidence of it, right? Um, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, there's, it, it, it just goes really so deep. I mean... Um, you know, we're well, talking about. It, Go ahead. As an example, uh, as Joe just pointed out, it is very, it's very interesting because the 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 Bible, uh, the Book of John, chapter one, uh, it says, "In the beginning was the Word, That's and right. the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Now, That's people right. say that that means Jesus. People have their own interpretations. I was always raised that that means that was talking about Jesus himself, but or just God in general. Obviously, as it says, the Word was God. Um, it, it does seem to resonate back to sound, back to, to a word, a spoken word especially, which is how most religions were carried before writing became, you know, very popular and easy to do, in printing especially, was through the spoken word. But that's just another example of the ancients pointing to something that for some reason we've lost. You and I were talking the other night mm-hmm. about, I've been over to the Mediterranean. I've been to ancient Roman amphitheaters, yeah. and their, their acoustics are perfect. I mean, they're perfect. Yeah. Still today, 2,000 years later, after there's ruins all around them, you can stand on that stage, somebody can be at the top of that theater, and they can hear you just like you're hearing me now. I'm not yeah. raising my voice. You can hear them perfect. Pitch perfect. They understood sound. They understood the importance of sound. And I, I would say... If you go back far enough, the ancients, especially with as much stone as they used and the stones that they used to build many of their holy places or their places that we think are holy places, were very harmonically resonant. They understood sound and how powerful it was even back then. Yeah. And, you know, if we look at uh, another little deeper dive uh, uh, from that point, actually, into Nikola Tesla, is his vortex math that he created, right? And uh, he didn't create it. He actually more simply wrote it down for us to understand what is what is reality, right? And, of course, vort- vortex math is based around the uh, sexo- sexosmal system. And this in, in itself is very interesting. Uh, today, we switched over to the metric system most places in the world. And, of course, the metric system is really really works well with economics. It's an economic math, right? Uh, but the, of course, throughout the world, the ancient math we use was sexosmal. Why? Why did they use such a weird six-base math? Well, because three, six, and nine make up everything. Uh, we talk about Fib- Fibonacci, and we want to get it all. We can, you just go deep, 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 super deep. Everything comes back to three, the power of three, uh, sixes, nines. These, this, this number of the vortex math is everywhere we look. Right, and it makes perfect yep. sense that the ancients uses sexosmal math because that is what reality is, right? Well, you also it's taking it back to Christian uh, teachings. Uh, three is a, is the holy number. Yeah. Uh, there's other other one other sacred numbers, but three is the holy number. It's the the Trinity, mm-hmm. uh, the divine three. The Bible is is all about. There's threes all through it. You know, yep. uh, trifectas and tri triune beings and all sorts of threes all through it um and 12 is obviously you know a multiple of three so yeah. is six and nine that's right six is the imperfect number in numerology and in, in, in biblical teachings um it is that is why six 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 is the mark of the devil which it's actually six 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 six, 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 six forever basically six repeating because it can never get to seven which is the other uh say as a sacred number which is the number of god is seven um so it's very sh- interesting that three throughout 
pretty much everywhere. You go anywhere you go, that number, that prime number has such a resonance in culture and in, in, in religion. It, it's crazy how much they knew and they just intuited like they just they couldn't have possibly had advanced computing and things of the nature that we do today for us to be able to work these theories out they just figured it out they just felt it deep inside themselves and put it together it's amazing or 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 maybe they did have access to something that is another conversation for a different day uh but um it is really interesting what, what, when, when you come down to math and the interesting aspects of math and uh uh you know what i had shown, shown the little image there i'll see if i can't come back up to it uh uh but um let me uh come over here and uh try to find it but um you know math is uh, of course uh, uh, the center of everything uh, uh, as usual and um nikola tesla knew that of course he did. Yeah. And, you know, here's his vortex yeah. math layout, right? And uh, it's a lot deeper than me just showing you an image. Uh, but uh, you should go take some time and look into it, right? Uh, here's another use of the 369. But it's everywhere. Uh, this uh, sexosomal math is is how reality interacts with itself. Uh, and it's, of course, the math of, uh, of toroidal fields as well, right? which is really where I, I didn't get into it as deep as I really should have. Uh, but uh, if you really want to understand what's going on in science now and how things work, you need to go study toroidal fields. Because what you'll find out is that, uh, in the, and I'm not just talking about speculative, speculative theory, like with the electron, right? I'm talking about actual experimentation in the laboratory showing that everything is torus-based, which is shocking. But it's, 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 that's what it is. That's what they're finding. That's what they're doing. Right. And yeah, and, and Mr. Tesla knew these things uh, 120, 30 years before mainstream science has caught up with him. Uh, they, they thought he was crazy. You can go back and read some of the things, some of the smears that Edison would throw against Tesla. They called him everything. I mean, there was nothing off the table. Yeah. Um, the, the man went so far as to electrocute animals in front of crowds to try and disprove this man's theories. Tesla rebutted this by electrocuting himself and proving that his electric, the alternating current was safe if grounded properly. Um, but my point is, is they went to every single layer to try and shut this guy down. I think honestly, when we're talking about people going and study, if you, if you study one thing that we ever talk about, study Tesla. Study the the impact that this one man had on yeah. the entire scientific world. It's ridiculous. And he was just a quiet man, mild mannered man for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, another interesting little thing too, just to add uh, add to it. Um, uh, uh, there's been scientists that have gone out and they've taken the sound of a shape, like a circle, a square, a triangle, octagon, mm -hmm. etc., and they've taken the sound of those shapes, right? <laughs> you know, the mathematical sound they create. And the interesting thing they found out is that when you take all the shapes and put them together, they make the chord of the F sharp minor, which is considered in music, as so I just mentioned that, to be the most perfect chord. It's very interesting that all the shapes we know when thrown together create an actual beautiful chord in their sound. Right? I mean, that's pretty cool. Interesting. I think. Yeah. Yeah, how it is interesting, like you're like you're saying, how it seems to be pointing to a harmonic universe is what I would yep. call it. It is um, where sound is basically everything, and what sound is is just vibration, frequency, and energy, like Tesla called it. Mm -hmm. He broke it down into its prime, you know, what what you would call it basically, but all that is is just sound. I mean, vibration. Yep. Oh, he's uh, a sound scientist. Energy. That's what he is. Yeah. yeah. You know, another interesting thing. Uh, we talk about language. Of course, language is sound, right? And we talk about the various sounds we make with our vowels and things like that. Um, but uh, if we go back and we look at uh, one particular fascinating language, actually, uh, which would be uh, Hebrew or Hexus, um, the Hebrew yep. language, the Jewish language. Uh, uh, this is something you might uh, not realize as well. If you go and you make... Uh, this is a very fascinating thing because we are starting to understand that the, the actual written Hebrew is actually what ancient Egyptian was writ the day-to-day -day writing. All those hieroglyphics are simply temple temple language. They're, they're there for it to be pretty, right? But the actual day-to-day -day language mm -hmm. is actually Hebrew. 
right? And if they, the fascinating, shockingly fascinating thing about Hebrew is if you go take all the different uh, characters of Hebrew and you take and you make the sound, and of course today we can do this, and you look at the sound, uh, they usually use sand and they'll put sand on these, uh, like a, a flatbed that has a speaker by, uh, uh, below it. And uh, when they, you, you make these sounds that are the Hebrew characters, they are the same shape as the Hebrew character. The sound is the shape. So somehow in ancient time, those guys knew enough about sound that when they would speak their words, they would then understand, okay, this is the shape of that sound. And then they, they wrote it down as an actual character. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hebrew, the yeah, actual written that's... words of Hebrew is actually the shape the sound makes. Oh, that's interesting. I was literally just thinking... Um because we're talking about things like language and, and things of this nature. And our language, especially our written language, is literally just us representing the sounds that we make. Mm -hmm. So it, it's I didn't know that about Hebrew, that it's 100% phonetically accurate. It's literally um, phonetically accurate, yeah. Yeah, literally phonetically accurate. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things. Right. And these are things that are not because we have a problem. Right. And this is a, a, one of the things that talking about another great mind. Uh, these are one of the things that uh, uh, Bacon and uh, John D gave us um, is mm -hmm. the fact that uh, at that time we're talking about, you know, 400 years ago. Right. Uh, at that time, scientists used to sit in a room and pontificate about what they thought something was. And what Bacon and, of course, D, his uh, his mentor were saying was, yeah, well, why don't you go out into the field and actually read research and improve it, right? Because the modern science, the scientific method, which is being abused horribly today, is coming from uh, is coming from Bacon, right? That's where it's coming out of, right? right? And, right. Uh, you know, going out into the world and actually proving it. But what we have today is these theoretical physicists and theoretical scientists that are still sitting in those damn rooms, sitting there doing mathematical gymnastics, trying to figure stuff out instead of going into the real world and experimenting on it, right? And uh, yep. the, the thing that's cool about plasma science is those guys are doing exactly what Bacon told them to do. They're going into the lab and they're reproducing it. And that is where, that is where the science is. Well, this is this is one of the ways you know, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, a, a proper scientist, a good scientist, is a scientist who can apply or at least attempt to apply their theories. Yeah. If your theories are so just out there that there's no possible way you can ever actually test them, well, good for you. Like, <laughs> great job. You've done some math and it works, but that's largely irrelevant to everyday people. Whereas Tesla. And guys like Tesla and, and, and Edison, to his credit, would get in there and they'd do the work or they'd pay people to do the work and get it to where it was something that could be applied, go from theoretical to applied sciences. But it's interesting how we were just talking about like religion. Another uh, another biblical verse is, you know, by your fruit, you shall know them. Well, Tesla had 300 patents, roughly. Mm -hmm. How many patents do guys like Tyson have? Does, oh, he, does he have any? Yes, no. Yeah, which may, which tells me one is a real scientist, a scientist who actually put his name on some a legal document, a legally binding document that this will work, and then has to prove it. And another is just a marketer, basically. <laughs> He's just out shilling. That's all he is. It, it's just interesting. It's it's interesting because men like Tesla are rare. You have men, and to his credit, uh, Elon Musk is like this. He'll put his name on things, and he'll go and do it, or at least mm -hmm. try it. And then you have men like Bezos, the Amazon. We basically have a modern day Edison and Tesla going at it right now, except for thankfully, Elon Musk is a little bit smarter when it comes to business matters than Tesla was. Um, and he's also a gentleman who will pay people more than do the work himself. Yeah, well, they're but, trying to tear him down too, though, dude. But, oh, I know. <laughs> this is what I'm going to. It's still the same power dynamic. It's the people who have who have the financiers, the people who finance science want to control science from people like uh, Musk who just want to do science to better the better mankind. Obviously he wants to make money too, but there's nothing wrong with that. No. But he also wants to better mankind as much as he can. He wants to leave the world a much better place than what, than what he walked into it. Bezos doesn't care about that. Bezos cares about money. Obviously. <laughs> That's just who he is. It's Edison, Tesla, Two is what we're looking at right now. It's fascinating how history resonates itself like that. Mm, there's, a, there's a reason why um, 
flying saucers are circular because the torus is uh, the best sound generator uh, in, in uh, I would call, in the, the design, the mechanical design. Well, the torus is the visual, visualization of sound, actually. Yeah, it, uh, but in terms of actually uh, producing sound uh, based on a shape, uh, it, you know, a circle, a triangle, uh, a rectangle, a long spear, whatever, the torus is the is the is the shape that actually resonates uh, the most. Mm -hmm. No, well, it's true that that UFO type of shape uh, is much more the insect that is using sound to move compared to the fighter jet, which is the forced muscle flight of a bird, right? There you go. That's right. Yeah. Well, you also have to. We were talking last week, or whenever it was last week or the week before, we were talking about uh, the moon and, and space Nazis and things of this nature. Yeah. And we were talking. I was. I brought up the Nazi bell, which is supposedly a at least could get you off the planet type device that they could fly with. Now, whether or not they actually had this or not is not really the point, but the way it worked was sound, quite literally sound. It was shaped like a bell for a reason, and that was because to, to create the lift that it needed, it would do harmonic resonance and up, up and away you would go. It would vibrate off the earth and lift you up with that shape. You can actually do this um, if you get a, a bell and don't let it move, it has to go somewhere. That energy is going to go somewhere. If you if you ping it and don't let it vibrate too much, it'll start to either lift or sink, depending on where you hit it. And that's basically what they were doing. Mm -hmm. They would hit the, hit, hit the bell, quote-unquote, and it would cause lift. It would lift them off. So it's, it's fascinating how much sound even then, even to them, was being applied in science for for things like beyond not even rocketry but just mm -hmm. you know to get into the lift off well sound, sound is also applied in laser technology and and that's what uh, well people, people laser technology follow. is 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 very lame and and soft now well we're we're into saser technology which is completely sound based they have saser beams they're working on that supposedly can cut mountaintops off dude yeah yeah. yeah, a a railgun, uh, even though it's you know uh, sexy in science fiction, mm -hmm. it's also based on uh, the propulsion through sound. Oh yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah, and it, I'm kind of wondering how many of you have actually heard the word Caesar, uh, Caesar beam, right? Because that's actually kind of the cutting edge right now. Uh, but there's a couple of little points uh, going back to our moon uh, conversation. We talked about how we know that the moon rings like a bell when it gets hit. Well, here's the thing. Uh, uh, our buddy here, Nikola Tesla, he proved that the Earth rings like a bell too. Yep, absolutely. Right. His plan was to send the energy uh, through the Earth, was his original idea, mm -hmm. to basically these towers would then distribute the power to you know the machines that they needed to run them, but he would run it through the planet because right. it was quote-unquote hollow and could resonate energy straight through it. Yeah, well, I mean, and this brings up, uh, uh, that absolutely destroys so much of modern science regarding uh, 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 Earth dynamics, right? Because supposedly it's this molten, solid, dense uh, iron core. It's obviously not true. Can't be true. If the dude proved right. that you can, the Earth rings like a bell, then uh, and he's tested it, this is not opinion, this is testing. That's the cool thing about Tesla. It's all tested, laboratory tested, right? Um, then the, yep. that you need to rethink what the Earth is. Is anybody doing that? Nope. Uh, another thing about the moon that's kind of interesting, we talk about the lunar wave a little bit. Uh, I couldn't quickly find something to show offhand, but uh, the lunar wave is very interesting because there's a lot of documentation of these waves moving up and down across the moon. And some people like uh, George said, it's a hologram, right? Well, what if it's not? Uh, if we take a look at uh, a lot of these actual optical uh, uh, telescopic uh, telescopic photograph ph photography and video that we do actually have, not this nonsense from NASA, which is all data based with artists uh, rendering it later, right? I'm talking about actual optical photography and video, right? And we look up in space. What do we see? <clears throat> we see a light that is supposed that is a planet, and it's constantly wavering. Now we call it a twinkle, right? And why is it twinkling? 
Well, they, they'll say, oh, there's uh, something moving or uh, distance, and uh, uh, they go on all this nonsense to try to explain it. But if you actually look at it with your own eyes and see it, as with that lunar wave, uh, how about it not being a hologram? How about it simply being that you're looking through water? Right, Because here's the interesting thing. Every culture in the world and every religion in the world, and talk about that power of three, everything has a power of three, including Christianity. It's, it's a three gods. Yep. It's not one. It's God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus. It's three. Right, Everything has three. Uh, but uh, all those ancients, what did they say space was made of? Water. They've all said it. They've all said it forever. And now all of a sudden it's this weird vacuum that doesn't even that doesn't even work with their own their own science they put forward. Well, what if space actually is some kind of liquid medium, right? What if it is? Uh, that would explain all these things we see through actual optical telescopes. And you should find it fascinating the fact that NASA and all these other guys they never actually show you optical things. It's always uh, uh, it's always tele uh, uh, some kind of data they've covered uh, they've covered through radar or radio uh, waves or whatever they're doing uh, right but it's never an actual optical image that should tell you something Let, let's look at the lunar wave uh, I, put, I put in our uh, hangouts chat the link and at 440 is the is what you're talking about and okay. there's, and there's plenty, and plenty in that video All right. uh, from different sources who captured the lunar wave. All right, well, let me come over here real quick. I'll grab it. You have to give this a moment because every time I take a link from someone in the chat, it always comes up in this weird, broken way. It's always broken. It's broken? No, it's all right now. I just have to give it a second. You said 440? Yeah, at 440. All right. You can see it at about 434, too. <laughs> Right. And uh, if you look at this and you see uh, uh, this isn't really the best one I've seen, uh, the best one I've seen, they're, they're actually showing uh, uh, it, uh, uh, this wave moving up. And it's interesting because when the wave goes past uh, some, uh, there it is, you see it going by. When it goes by something, it actually distorts it just like water does. Right. 440 and also at uh, six, uh, 603, uh, uh, all the way to 6 and uh, 614. Yeah, they're um, showing it here consistently, and there's many things you can see. Uh, look at the wave coming up, and uh, yeah. I don't know if they're going to get really into the close detail, but if you go and look real yeah, close detail, the, uh, you'll see mark. that it's distorting stuff just like a ripple in water does, actually. Even at uh, even at 5 to about 5.30 or so in that video, it shows uh, uh, some very interesting water-like ripples. Yeah, and you, you just go check out Lunar Wave. There's tons of videos. Uh, but uh, it, it's very interesting because I know, understand, once again, it's like the Flat Earthers who they have this this mistake they found, this truth they found, this seed, and they've jumped to a conclusion or they've gone back to the old thing and that's how they're defending it. Uh, well, it's the same thing with this. Everyone says, it's a hologram. Well, it doesn't have to be a hologram. It could simply just be liquid, uh, how we're seeing through things through liquid, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying it's water per se. I'm saying that it's some kind of liquid medium. And uh, <clears throat> I don't even know. That's that's a speculation. It's out there. That's out. That's a, really an out there speculation. But there are a lot of evidence that points towards something like that being true. Uh, space itself is not made up of a vacuum. It's obviously not a vacuum. Uh, there's something else going on, right? Um, yeah, and... there, there are surfaces that are lighter than air. And there, there are liquid surfaces that are quite literally, uh, they, they look and feel like air, but they're liquid. So, you know, the, the, the elements or all these, uh, these uh, characteristics of your theory about space being liquid, uh, some sort of liquid, already exists and it's tangible. I mean, NASA has uh, a piece of foam that's lighter than air and is able to absorb uh, heat to such a tremendous um, um, uh, what called temperature, e even holding it after it's uh, been uh, attacked by such heat. It's cool to the touch. Right. And yeah, I mean, that, that technology is 
it, it defi defies the, uh, the standard physics. Oh, a lot of things are starting to defy physics, that's for damn sure, because we need to rewrite physics. Uh, but uh, goes to Henry, this is a good point, dude. Uh, we're actually seeing it through a fluid, the atmosphere. Very good point, dude. Very good point. Um, uh, I, like I said, I don't know exactly what's going on. That's a, I'm not willing to dive into that one because uh, I, we need more information. And I think we're going to see it. It's going to come. Uh, but um, it, it is interesting that a lot of the things we're talking about and arguing and, and, and simply stating are things that the ancients, which is tying back into all the other TFT we stuff do, knew about and talked about and showed us. It's fascinating to me that these supposed Neolithic people who knew nothing and had stone hammers, but yet could create these incredible stone, uh, 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 you know, structures, were uh, that actually the knowledge they have is shockingly impressive and interesting. And uh, you know, obviously, we need, re need to rethink everything. Everything needs to be redone, and we need to take the scientific method and apply. And this is the thing I love about plasma science, actually. Uh, and I really think they're going to have to rename themselves. I don't think calling themselves plasma science is really what it should be. Uh, I think harmonics is probably more what it should be. But uh, nevertheless, um, they what they are doing is saying, "Hey, we have some ideas. We're going to go into the laboratory, and we're going to use we're going to science use the scientific method, and we're going to try to prove our points." And if they're wrong, they're wrong. Then they move on and they try to try other things and different things. The, the real difference between the plasma scientists, which, like I said, every year, more and more scientists are jumping uh, the aisle and going over to them because that is where real science is happening. The rest of these guys are sitting there and pontificating about their theories. They're not doing anything to prove. And, and the interesting thing about math, because math is quite fascinating, but you can do all kinds of incredible gymnastics with math. That doesn't make it so. Right? Yep. And, oh. uh, you know, I do apologize, Eric. Eric says, I, I apologize. Uh, Eric says, Chester is making my head explode. Holy dang, very interesting. I'm glad you're having fun, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, it's a fair point, right? The it, Even if these guys aren't really on the exact right track right now, at least they're heading in the right direction, right? Because they're doing actual science. They're not sitting there talking about it. They're making it happen in the laboratories. Uh, do you realize there's a guy uh, right now uh, who is a plasma scientist that has taken water and found that uh, there is a magnetic response with certain type of metals in water that causes the water to expand away from it, right? It's almost like a, a dye magnet is what you would call it, right? And uh, what it, what he's doing with that is putting this these special type of metals in their uh, this type of aluminum, I think, uh, in the right position inside this little vat of water. And what he's doing is he's generating electricity in this in this revulsion of the water uh, particles moving, uh, you know, molecules, excuse me, uh, moving away from these plates. He's literally created uh, energy. And here's the thing: it's perpetual. Right now, this is a very small scale thing he's doing. It can only uh, power a little teeny fan. Uh, but uh, how long before he he masters that and gets a, a perpetual liquid battery? I mean, yeah, come the, on. yeah. the repul the repulsion's constant. Yes, yeah, that, that that is correct. Um, I've I've seen that technology, and it's it's based on volume, uh, and uh, which is interesting. The, the because the greater the volume. Uh, the the number the uh, the calculation takes a sliding curve. It's not it's not a straight line, and which is really fascinating. And the other thing no, is no because um, it's toroidal in shape. Right, and the other and the other thing is um, when I mentioned the torus being a perfect sound generator uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, consider this: the Large Hadron Collider mm -hmm. is a torus shape. And I've said this before, uh, previously, I've spoken to scientists here at the University of Toronto and they told me that you don't need something miles apart in the shape of a torus to smash uh, particles together. You can do it in a lab. Yeah, but and you got so, to understand though, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Higgs, uh, <laughs> excuse me, he is the ultimate expression of the particle dude uh and the particle science their desperation and the funny thing is in their desperation to prove their particle science they have actually created toroidal science and i don't even think they're aware of it i mean literally yeah right yeah 
You know, get me on Higgs. Yep. No, don't get me on that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I do think we beat this conversation to death, though. Uh, yeah. But the the uh, the interesting thing is that uh, to really end it up here is Nikola Tesla was an amazing dude, and he's he even though he's known mainly, mainly for electricity, he is the guy that has pushed sound science forward more than anybody actually in modern times and a lot of his technology is still being used whether it be directly from him or overtly from him uh, we're seeing it all over the place uh, a lot of this technology the cell phones you have in your hands are from him they are right yep. everything there's so many pieces of technology you use in your day-to-day life that are coming out of this dude right and uh he's a very very important individual and the the words he's trying to tell you the things he's trying to say uh most people don't listen uh but there are a growing number of people who are and those people are changing the world because they're taking that idea they're applying the science they're ignoring all the ridicule and hate that they're getting out of the scientific community you understand sometimes that hate goes down to actual physical interaction we're talking about uh, defunding uh trying to uh, get people uh, criminally attached uh with various accusations etc cetera, etc cetera. the mainstream science is trying their best to destroy these people but they are ignoring it they do not care they're taking the inspiration that Tesla gave them and they are pushing forward into the actual future and it is impressive and I am happy excited to live in this day uh, because if I was born earlier I might not have seen this happening uh, but we're seeing it happening and it's happening right under your nose and you're probably not even aware of it um, and uh, you should go become aware of it I mean there's simple uh, um, uh, there's simple little places you can go get a head start in, like, say, the Thunderbolts of the Gods project or uh, um, uh, just look up plasma science. There's a bunch of places you can start the beginning of your, uh, of your research into this. And what you'll find is that it goes way, way deeper than I've been able to or we've been able to uh, uh, offer to you here in this uh, couple of hours. Uh, but I implore you to go check it out. And, and, and uh, the, we didn't really cover a lot of conspiracy theory in the traditional sense uh, of than the Trump thing. Uh, but it, it, it is the ultimate conspiracy theory, in my opinion, because they're trying to destroy the idea of it. They don't want you to know about it. And that is the essence of a conspiracy, right? So uh, don't let them win. Go out there and educate yourself and look at this stuff and understand that we're not talking about theories. We're talking about actual in-laboratory experimentation. And it's amazing. Right, uh, but that's what I have to say on it. Uh, go ahead and give us your closing comments, Thundero. Uh, mine are real simple. Nikola Tesla is, as I've said, probably the greatest man of the last hundred years, especially in sci- the science world. Um, if there's one thing that we talk about on here that ever gets your interest and you want to study on your own, this is the one. This is the one. His. The, his his theories and his view of the universe and his experiments, all of it have changed the world even into the future. Like like Chester said, something as simple as a thing we all use pretty much every day a cell phone. He invented the technology that laid the groundwork that made those possible. That's right. In fact, he probably could have done it then had there have been any reason to. Um, this man was so far ahead of his time, it's scary it's a shame we didn't get his some of his greatest ideas realized but that's unfortunately somehow sometimes how the world works but as science continues to advance they do not advance towards Einstein they do not advance towards Newton no. they do not advance towards any one of these theor- theorists of these theoretical scientists of the past or present they advance towards Tesla they cannot escape it and they never will because he was right Awesome. Oh, also, also, like, also, I like to add uh, regarding schools. Schools do not exist to educate you. They only exist to make you aware of the current environment around you, so that way you're able to survive it when you're an adult. That's the only reason schools exist. Well, I would argue actually that schools are there to uh, turn you into a citizen, actually. Yeah, uh, uh, which is basically, uh, you said it in a much more elegant way than I have. 
but it, the, the thought is exactly the same as I'm trying to portray with my fi um, poor lack of sentences. I get you. Awesome. Denali? Well, the only thing I can say is don't take our word f from everything you uh, we said today. We could be wrong about certain facts, and we encourage you when we talk about all of these to look into it yourself to make your own informed decision um, and be be your own informant person. Yeah. We're only here to provide you know, a seed because everything of these conspiracy has a seed of truth in it. Oh, yeah. And, and it's that truth that we need to uncover. Uh, but we also encourage that exploration that you as the individual have to do it. And if you really want to, then we encourage you to investigate and find out on your Absolutely. own. Absolutely. And goes to Henry. You know, this chat, you guys have had some awesome opinions in here in uh, comments mm -hmm. uh, where this is more of a open uh, discussion between us and, uh, and we're just giving our ideas and stuff. So we really can't follow the chat as tightly as we would no in a normal show. But nevertheless, you guys have been saying some really cool things. And goes to Henry. This is an awesome statement, dude, because Tesla was not a scientist. He was an engineer. Boy, that's a beautiful statement. I love it. Yeah, uh, and it's very true <laughs> because an engineer makes things happen. As uh, often, uh, the actual idea of the modern scientist is really simply a thought process. Yeah, cool, dude. Um, anyway, uh, thank you guys very much. Definitely go check out Tesla. Go check out uh, check out all the other things. But uh, uh, we need to make a decision what we're going to talk about next week on TFT. Uh, I'm loving this show, by the way. I'm having a lot of fun, and we, you know we're having fun with this, right? Uh, you don't have to take it so seriously. We've said several times, go check it yourself, right? Uh, but uh, it's fun to sit and, uh, and talk about and pontificate. And uh, some of this stuff is purely speculative. Uh, some of this stuff is not. Uh, but it's certainly a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, you know, I, we need to decide what we would do next week. And you know what keeps popping into my mind? Purple Dawn. But that is so deep. That is so deep. I don't know if we could do it. Can, can you give us a synopsis, a quick, a quick elevator pitch on that? For the people sure. who don't Purple know Dawn. About. Um, uh, it, it would be a uh, alternate uh, origin uh, theory. Uh, and... Uh, there's a good bit of evidence behind it. It's not. Uh, it's not a hypothesis. It's actually an, an actual theory. Um, and uh, well, what it's stating is that uh, Earth was uh, originally a moon of of Saturn. Uh, when Saturn came into the solar system uh, uh, and uh, started interacting with Jupiter, which at that time was much closer to the sun, uh, they caused a lot of uh, mess, mess up and mistakes and uh, trouble amongst themselves because of their, uh, their various uh, uh, energetic interactions. Uh, and uh, we got thrown away from it. And because uh, we were a moon, one of the moons of Saturn and we were sitting under the heliosphere that is Saturn, because understand that Saturn, Jupiter, etc., uh, we call these gas giants. Well, actually, they're a type of sun actually, is what they are. Uh, and uh, Saturn, uh, uh, because we were in the heliosphere of uh, Saturn, we couldn't see any stars. There's always this purple light, this purple twilight that was existing for people there. And it explains uh, a lot of why a lot of the old Earth fossils and the old things we're finding and a lot of the animals on Earth are actually very nocturnal, meaning they can see well in low light, uh, whereas humans can't. And in that theory, we start getting ideas that uh, hum humans actually came from Mars uh, in this mix up when it gets quite fascinating. I'm not going to get into that, but, uh, um, uh, that if you look at the, uh, ancient, uh, uh, hominids, for instance, like say Neanderthal and things like that, uh, we keep talking about, Oh, Neanderthal's got these huge, big brains. They must've been super smart. Well, they might've been smart. Uh, but actually we know that because of where the brain is positioned, the bigness of the brain is positioned in the skull, it was actually ocular based. So, and, and if you look at their skull, they got gigantic eyes, right? So these things were uh, actually really good at, in the dark. They were nocturnal, right? Not diurnal. And um, uh, there's uh, and many of the other fossils of humans are that way as well in the, the ancient humans. They're all nocturnal beasts. And, uh, basing, and this is based upon the idea that they were living in a purple twilight. Uh, this is the purple dawn theory. Wow. How about, <clears throat> instead of focusing just on that one specific one, mm -hmm. we focus on um, alternate origins. 
we could just do different conspiracies or just just, just different theories that aren't necessarily t- taken for the mainstream um, for the origin of our world, sure. basically. Why not? There are many. Uh, you could go uh, very scientific in that approach. You could also go very uh, anecdotal uh, with uh, ancient uh, 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 creation stories, although they're basically all the same. But uh, yeah, that would be fun. What do you guys think about alternate creation theories? It certainly like would it. be a palate cleanser. But, uh, it would be a, a 180, so to speak. It would be, yeah. And I can go very deep in that. It's going to be hard. <clears throat> it's going to be hard to not pull that back into plasma science, though, uh, because it is so directly, you know, orchestrated by that uh, concept. Uh, but um, I'll do my best. Okay, I am puzzled, Chester. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a subject that you have very difficult going deep in? Hmm. Is there, some, is there something that baffles you so much that you can't even pierce its outer shell? Cookies. Yes, they are. They are a pox on this world. They are. Uh, I don't know, dude. I, I do my best to educate my, myself as broadly as possible. Of course, what that does is it makes you not a specialist uh, uh, in any particular thing. But I, I've always been the type of person that wants to know everything I can. Now, I realized some years ago that this is an impossible task. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm stubborn, I guess. Uh, but uh, is there anything that I, I can't sit and pontificate upon? <clears throat> I'm sure there must be. Yeah. Brain surgery, maybe? I'm sure there are many no, that, things. I just can't think that, it off the top of my head. Yeah, that's interesting. Brain surgery actually d- does fall in the Tesla uh, concept. It could, it could. And actually, I'm sitting here thinking about it. I actually know quite a bit about that. <laughs> um, but no, I know there's tons of things I don't know. There's, a, I mean, dude, the older I get, the more I realize that I don't know nothing. This is the shocking thing about getting older and gaining knowledge. You come to the realization that I know nothing. We know nothing. This is the problem. It's not a problem. It's actually kind of exciting, but it is a reality. I'm sure there's a ton of things I can't sit and uh, and uh, speculate about, dude. I just I uh, can't think it offhand. But uh, okay, what about what about what about uh, the other two gentlemen here? Um, is there something that troubles you that you can't even pierce the outer shell on a subject? Mm. Booster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, that is a you, conundrum. You notice he ran away, right? Yeah, he ran f- far away. <laughs> the emoji conspiracy, that's funny. The problem is, <clears throat> is anything I say, I can research. In a, in a few hours, I'll know enough to talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great uh, thing we have, the internet. Oh, uh, it is amazing it's a tool. beautiful, wonderful thing. Uh, but besides, I get, I get, I get where you're going with it, George. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to have something where we can't really talk about very well because that's not fun. It's not entertaining. We want something that uh, we can actually deep dive and give our ideas and speculate about and uh, uh, you know do that kind of stuff with. I mean, this is just no, having I, fun. I, I, We're not being crazy serious about it, but we do want to be entertaining, right? Oh no, no, of course, of course. Uh, I, because, uh, the curiosity to this question yeah. is that. Um, I heard the entire um, play on the, on the stream. I just mm-hmm. wasn't able to come in until the end. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a lot of fascinating things that, while well, they were touched upon, uh, they weren't expanded. And one of them, which was um, the, the sound uh, deprivation, oh. uh, or the deprivation. Of, of all of of everything, so, uh, which may, you know, the sound in your heart, the electromagnetic uh, pulses throughout your body, and all that Magno stuff. Magnoelectric, right? I've tried uh, the deprivation tank. Oh, really? Yes. And um, here, here's a, a few things that really um, are scary. Uh, a human being, a regular human being. Will, will not will will not survive forty five more than forty five minutes in a sound deprivation tank. No, well, and it's not even a true uh, sound de- uh, deprivation tank anyway. It's impossible. Yeah, but no, it's not. But, 
but but it's but, it's as close as you can get. Yeah, no, no, it is. Yeah. And an yeah. interesting thing, if you could perfect it down to making completely complete deprivation, I think you would die within a minute, actually. Well, yeah, because uh, because in a in a few minutes, uh, when you are there's absolutely no light, and there's no sound, uh, you already become aware of your heartbeat. Oh yeah. Uh, with in about ten minutes, you're already becoming aware of everything that your body is doing. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually scary, and and uh, the, after that, it's just. Where, wherever it takes you, but it's it's been there's a reason why they don't allow anyone to go beyond the 45 minute mark. Well, it's interesting actually. Remember how I was talking about all the shapes together create the F, uh, F sharp minor perfect chord, right? Yep. Uh, well, yep. actually, the human body gives off the same chord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, isn't that amazing? It is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the human body is a cacophony of noise, actually. You just can't hear it because of all the noise around you. I think people don't really realize how much sound is around you at all times. Now, if you go into a city, it's it's deafening. Uh, but even if you're in the countryside, I think, it, you know, even if you find the most lonely, quiet place you can find, you're literally con uh, uh, surrounded by sound all the time. And I'm talking about on the wavelengths that we can hear. I'm not even talking about the stuff above and below what, we're, uh, what our, our meager ears are capable of, uh, uh, of uh, comprehending. Uh, you are surrounded well, by sound at all times. You're never. Well, that's yeah. one of my favorite things in the world to do is to just go out, uh, like in the woods or whatever, and just sit quietly and just list, just just let l literally let the sound just wash over me, and it's so relaxing. It Can drains be. you of all negative energy. Yeah. You know, there's another <laughs> little interesting thing. Uh, this is talking about sound as well um, uh, that uh, you might want to try. Uh, I find it very fascinating that in the modern world we never go outside without bare, with our bare feet. It's so rare, right, uh, that we do that. We're yeah. always covering our feet. We're always covering our feet. Well, the earth itself, the ground, the soil, the rock, uh, it actually has its own sound, as do the as does the grass and everything else has its own frequency, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, try every now and then, a few times a week, just walk around outside barefooted on the soil, the earth, the bare earth. Connect your feet to the bare earth. I'm telling you, if you do that a few times a week over the coming, uh, a few times a week over the coming weeks and months, you'll feel better. Oh yeah, the 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 the, sen the sensors on your feet. Uh, you can do that. That's that's the poor man's m foot massage. But mm -hmm. it, get get yourself a foot massage or or a head massage. Uh, these these are two areas of the body that are that lack. Sensitivity, <laughs> touch. Yeah, but it's um, not the it's not actually the massage that's doing it, uh, 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 George. It's actually the the vibratory sound of the earth itself that is coming up through your body. Uh, the shoe actually gets in the way of it and uh, and blocks it to a point. Not completely, of course. Uh, but uh, going barefoot uh, actually will make you feel better. Of course, you can't do it all the time. Like Joe is making a joke here. I used to be a kid. There's a reason I wear shoes now. Of course, I understand that. Uh, but uh, just a few times a week, uh, I'm telling you, you'll feel better. This is not a, not my opinion. This has been researched and proven to be true. We have well, completely removed ourselves from the our tactile contact to the planet. And uh, and uh, if you want to feel better, just try it out. The, uh, a, f a funny thing about sound is that... Uh... The the planet Earth itself is a is a sound beacon to to the rest of the universe. Oh sure. If if if, if there's somebody out there who actually has their telescope pointed at us, they'll they'll get uh, an orchestra of sound long oh, before right. they that's they, they that's get why hit by. that's why all these agencies use radio telescopes. I mean, it's yeah. because it's all sound. Uh, but uh, there's another little aspect of thing called a uh, Birkeland current. You ever heard of the Birkeland current? Um, it's um, it's this energy that connects everything, right? Like all our suns, like our sun, for instance, is coming out of the Orion Nebula, right? It was born there, and uh, uh, all the uh, like Betelgeuse is beyond us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, you can uh, follow our daisy chain from our sun all the way back into the Orion Nebula, and it's still connected. There's a Birkeland current that is connecting our sun to the next sun to the next sun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And every sun in the in the universe is done this way. All the planets are also connected by Birkeland. 
currents coming off of our sun itself. And of course, now, you know, originally Berk the Birkeland current was thrown down as plasma because uh, one of the big things of plasma science. But now we're starting to understand the Birkeland current itself is simply resonance, which is sound. It's fascinating, right? Yes, it is. It's actually which are which our topic for the night uh, told us. He told us repeatedly, he and he made sure that when any anybody asked him what the how to understand electricity, he said you must first understand the universe. Yeah. And because people thought of him as the electric man, Nikola Tesla, but right. but like you said, he was really right. studying frequency and resonance and That's vibration. Right. That's right. And energy as, and as a whole, which is what we basically just call sound. That's what sound is. And I was very excited. So he would say. Guys, I was very excited when you guys made a decision to do Tesla. I was like, ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> I was doing my little. So he would tell people all the time that that's what holds together. And that is quite literally the makeup of our universe is effectively sound, is, is vibration, resonance, all of it. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw one last thing regarding sound. Um, <laughs> lame, layman astronomers have pointed their telescopes directly at the sun and it's nothing like the pictures that you see from nasa no it it, it, lo it looks like a whole bunch of particles uh, vibrating and connected and vibrating around each other mm -hmm. oh yeah and and those dudes who created a miniature sun in the laboratory which i talked about earlier uh they are uh, very clearly telling us that the this because they made one right uh the sun is not a nuclear engine it's actually more like an electrical diode actually it functions more like a diode uh than an actual uh, so which would mean that inside the sun it would be hollow uh, the sun would simply be a a a spherical shell right and inside there would be nothing but you know I'm sure there'd be some kind of dynamic something going in there, but uh, it would be a dark space. Now, here's the interesting thing. When you when they do show us these photos of the sun, what do we see? We see black spots. And then the other fascinating thing is the atmosphere of the sun is far harsher than the surface. Matter of fact, the those black spots are cool spots. That's why they show up as black. And the deeper you go down to the sun, the cooler it gets. That's weird. Right? Well, not, not really. Um, the resonance frequency on, on the surface would uh, actually make it hotter than inside. Yeah, yeah, but George, I mean, I, yeah, I that, understand that because, it, like I said, it's more like a diode. But for the longest time, the sun has been presenting to us as a nuclear furnace. And therefore, that doesn't make sense, that the center would be cold. Right? Yeah, understood. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, um, if you look at it from a very simple layman scientific approaches oh you look up this the heat of the sun oh if it's hot here that means the closer you get to it it'll get hotter mm -hmm. oh, old old lazy way of uh deducing now there was also a lot of uh you know, talk, talk about the sun we don't want to get into there because that could be a whole show in itself but uh, uh the interesting thing about the sun is uh there's been a lot of theories about the sun for a long time that it could be even from the einsteinian guys uh that the sun could be some kind of way to move quickly around the universe actually from inside the sun meaning using a travel thing and uh, uh this is very much uh, uh, a uh, conspiracy theory but i've seen many videos of uh, these uh, sun monitoring satellites showing what looks looks like very large craft heading into the sun, you know, UFOs and everything like that. And that's kind of fascinating into itself. But that's not what we're doing. We're trying to make a decision what we're going to talk about next week. So where are we on that? Denali? How about, how about we do this? How about we, we've done this before, and for some reason they all go quiet, like we just, like we just pointed a big spotlight on them. Chat, hmm. what do you want us to talk about next week? Give us, give, give us your. Ow, my cat just literally scratched the shit out of me. Give us your idea of what you want to talk about next week. Yeah, guys, tell us. Shit. Uh, can you elaborate in what way it's like a diode? Um, uh, this is simply, I'd have to go and do the research and bring it to you to show you, to give you the correct wording is why I didn't get into it. Uh, because I don't want to put forward the wrong actual, you know, uh, uh, you know, terminology. Uh, but um, 
uh, the scientists who are studying the sun and uh, also these guys who are creating the artificial suns, uh, they said it works like a diode. They didn't say it is a diode. They said it's like a diode. And uh, it, it, it's actually some of them kind of don't like using that word because they don't think it's accurate enough. But uh, you would have to go and research that more clearly or I would have to uh, to be able to have all the correct terminology. But uh, it's uh, <clears throat> it's electrical is the ultimate point they're trying to make. It's an, it's an electrical sphere. It's not a, a ball. It's a sphere, meaning a shelled sphere. Uh, the inside of it is not actually the function of it. Um, so it's, a, it's basically what, what they're trying to say is <clears throat> you have these Birkeland currents that are coming out of nebula. And uh, the nebula, of course, we know are where suns are, are formed. And um, uh, as this Birkeland current reaches out, every so often it has this... Um, it has like this uh, static bulge that happens along the chain. <clears throat> and this is the formation of the sun. Now, why that happens and all the uh, reasons that's going on behind that is still a lot of a lot of a lot of debate is going on with that. But something is causing along that Birkeland current to have bulging happening. And that's a sun. It's it, it's not separate from the current. It's simply a bulge in the current. And that's what a sun is. Uh, so <clears throat> there, there's the, the, they're just starting uh, to get an understanding of what's causing these effects. Uh, and the fact that they can recreate it in a laboratory is showing they're on the right uh, right track. I think there's a lot more work to do. There's decades and decades to go before they have any really strong theories, I think. And I don't see anyone saying they're all talking about Canada's secrets. Um <clears throat> No. <laughs> Let's see. We have dinosaurs, gravity, lost technology, mountains are trees. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, does does he mean the giant trees that are that or the giant mountains that look like they could be petrified trees? Yeah, we saw that. Um, we all saw that YouTube special. Though. Or it was actually a documentary was put on YouTube, but uh, that was fascinating. Actually, it okay. is. Um, it any of those work for me? I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't care at all. I think, <clears throat> I think the tree one, <clears throat> mounds of trees, I think that would be a fun talk, uh, but we just don't have anywhere near enough evidence to do anything just having a fun conversation about it. I mean, which is fine. Um, uh, gravity, I think we, I, 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 how many shows have I debunked gravity so far? Uh, dinosaurs could be interesting. I wouldn't mind doing dinosaurs. Okay, it's fine with me. Uh, we could do all sorts of. I mean, there's a there's even the people who say dinosaurs are not real that they never existed that it's all hogwash. That would be a religious the religious take on it. I've actually heard pe literal people actually say this to me: dinosaur bones are put in the ground by Satan to fool, try to trick us. <laughs> well, no, there's people who who do a completely uh, secular approach to it too, um, who say that they're they're not real. Dinosaurs aren't real. There's even people who say nuclear uh, fission isn't real. That nuclear bombs and things aren't real. I said, don't you know, don't tell that to the Japanese. They might not like to hear that very much. I I will take the uh, scientific bone aspect and uh, <clears throat> culmination into the avian uh, aspect. You take the religious uh, uh, side of it. How about that? Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Denali? What do you think about dinosaurs? I mean, there's not a ton of yeah, conspiracy theory, but it's a, it's an interesting conversation. Uh, what what aspect of dinosaurs would you like to take? Well, there are even, and Denali could talk about this if he wants, or he, it doesn't matter. We can talk about whatever. But um, there's even people mm -hmm. today that say there are still dinosaurs, and I'm not talking about like crocodiles or turtles. I'm talking about actual dinosaurs in Africa, in the deepest parts of Africa, because there's huge parts of Africa we can't really go into still. Well, I'm glad I'm taking the biological side of it because, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll I'm taking the biological side of it. <laughs> you take the religious side of it. Denali, you're going to float somewhere, I'm sure. Yep, I'll float on. All right. Um, and, uh, George, you can uh, take any kind of position you'd like as well. Uh, Ghost of Henry says, Mike S. Miller doesn't believe in dinosaurs. He doesn't believe in unicorns either. Or he does believe in unicorns. He doesn't understand that they're rhinos. Uh, but uh, Mike is a – we love Mike. We love Mike. He's a good old boy. Uh, who there are people who say ghosts aren't real. Uh, well, uh, and this is Dr. Vankman with the Ghostbuster symbol as an icon saying there are people who say ghosts aren't real. You know that you're right, there are. Uh, but the yeah, we will have to eventually do a show on the paranormal focusing on spirits. I think that would be very fun. That okay. would be, uh, yeah. 
the, the one thing I like to add about dinosaurs is we all have to come into an agreement for, before we begin that uh, the carbon dating is a flawed science. It's extremely flawed. Oh, yeah. spoilers. Spoilers. That's, that's how I was going to... Yeah. Darn it. That's, that was my whole angle. You it just was. blew my whole <laughs> angle, George. Well, you you got to take the new earth <laughs> aspect if you could take the religious side of it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, I believe in Father Christmas. I believe in peace on earth. So do I, dude. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad you guys came here uh, and joined us. A whole bunch of you were in here the whole time. Two, uh, two and a half hour. Damn. Uh, but uh, this is a lot of fun. We do enjoy this. And keep in mind, guys, if uh, you know all of your comments and stuff in the chat are awesome, but if you want to come up here and join us, us and give us your opinion please do man uh the links are just down below you can find my facebook and twitter twitter is easier but just tell me you want to be on the show and i'll put you on the show dude happy to happy to um and uh yeah but other than that denali uh, yeah. you, know, you know how much time it would save us in the conversations chester won't have to read the chats well i i don't get to read the chats much in this because i'm i'm too i'm too focused and ranting uh to keep on top of that yeah <laughs> he's too busy uh debunking gravity and the earth itself as yes, being right. a sphere. That's right. I am. <laughs> Dinosaurs, fact or fiction. That was a fun show, actually. I like that one. Uh, anyway, Denali, take us out of here, man. All right. Well, tomorrow is going to be at our coming to news today. Show is going to be at 9 p.m. to see how that goes. Um, but as always, your perception. Oh, reiterate yeah, that. Reiterate that. Tomorrow we are doing a 9 p.m. Eastern PM Standard Time Eastern show. Standard Time. Yes. Yes. So we're yes. we're doing a little bit different. Uh, we made a mistake last week, but it seemed to be liked. Uh, so we want yeah. we're going to do the Monday Comics News today. We're going to do it at 9 p.m. to try to accommodate some of those California people. So it, 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 we won't be late, Joshua. We will be on time at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sorry, sorry, Janelle. Go ahead. Right. Um, then Tuesday is going to be regular time with Bugs Bear Basement at 8 p.m., mm -hmm. followed by Wednesday, which we'll watch uh, John Wick Chapter 2 Ooh. for Bunny Vision Movie Night uh, because John Wick Chapter 3 comes out this weekend. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, snap. Yeah. Can, can, can we take a, a, a side bet to, to see if uh, Endgame is going to hold it? the lead or not when John Wick comes out? Oh no, John Wick's gonna blow it out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's good. If it gets good reviews and people are liking it, that's gonna blow it out. Because Endgame, uh, we all thought it was gonna make that uh, break that record, and it still might. Uh, but uh, it, the reason it slowed down so quickly because everybody and their brother went and saw it the first weekend, but then everyone realized eh, it's a, you know, even the people who like it, it's still mediocre, right? Uh, unlike me, who gives it a two. Uh, but um, you know that it's it's a problem. It's not a great movie. So. Eleven out of ten. This guy. Eleven out of ten. Why do we let this guy? Who let this guy know. in here? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Denali, take us out. Good. All right. Well, then Thursday it's going to be comics news today at eight p.m. Eastern regular time. No shows on Friday, followed by Saturday with our next fan speak at eight p.m. Eastern. But as always, your perception. Always shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. No, I must say. Later, guys. Aloha.